uh, like in little and we are a couple live. nugs of this stuff. He's got a weird one. He says he gave me this one that it's like all dark chocolate. There's nothing nothing mean about it. There's it's just really pleasant dark chocolate. Uh, it smells like dark kind of kind of you know dark chocolatey. You know, it's not like a bad <laughs> smell. It's very kind of dark chalky. Um, it's got a sweetness to it. Like it has know? that coke, that bitter cocoa tone. Yeah, to it's it. got this cocoa so, thing to it. So just, know? I like managed this... to hit the live like thirty seconds into the description that you were there. So what exactly oh, right are on, you right talking on. about? Because I, I, I like we absolutely need to share that, and I'll just do the quick intro so everybody knows what the fuck is happening. Welcome to Planting Seeds with Mister Trees, where we hang out with Mister Trees and plant seeds and grow his plants and talk about them. If they're great, we'll tell them. If they're not so great, we'll. We don't know. We haven't come to that conclusion yet, but we won't get there probably because so far these plants look fucking awesome. Um, and I've been super impressed. Like, I mean, like really good, really good so far. I, I've got them. They're kind of on the screen there. You can kind of see them a little bit. Um, but do you want to do you want to say uh, hello, Mr. Trees, and tell us about exactly what you just said there? And I'm going to I want to I want to see that weed. Yeah. So I was saying my. uh my buddy down the road was growing some of the ice cream cake Kandahar and he, he was gracious enough to hand me a couple of buds of it. And he said that this one in particular, he had a couple of them and this one in particular was kind of a, uh, you know, interesting to him because it was very just dark chocolate. It was dark chocolate on the taste and the flavor. And it kind of held, holds that way through a few, few good rips out of the pipe so far. And I haven't rolled a joint with it. I'm going to do that tonight, but uh, it, it holds that dark, dark chocolate kind of flavor it's very kind of cocoa-y and you know mildly pleasant it's very interesting it, it didn't get any of the nastiness that that i was looking for it to get and it developed this strange dark chocolate you know tone to it and it and it's throughout it's it's the kind of the smell has this sweetness and this cocoa and and this dark chocolate kind of tone to it and it tastes exactly how it smells i mean it's it's very strange you know they don't usually they don't always do that you know i was just saying i was smoking dog walker earlier and i'm like god damn it i wish it tasted as nasty as it smelled you know i wish i could get the nastiest you know taste out of there it, it the smell just doesn't match up all the time every time so but this does this one matches up exactly with that dark chocolate tone um it's got good resin content. It's got good Can you density. move your camera a little bit there, Mr. Trees? You keep your the, your beautiful face keeps bobbing off the screen oh, yeah, yeah, every yeah, once in a while. Just a, there you go. Yeah, get that. There there's that go. full smile. There we go. There Everybody we go. can see your pretty face. Now I can go like this. Everybody can see your pretty face. There hey. you go. Hey, how's it going, guys? So, yeah, so I've been uh yeah, I just started tearing into this a little earlier, you know, and I've got some drying um myself. I got a couple of these drying. And I got a couple of the SFV Kandahars, you know, just now starting to get get looking pretty. So, I'll be able to show some of those probably next time here. But yeah, I was I was intrigued. This is, I wish I could show it. I'll take a picture on Instagram today. Anybody follows me or, or knows that stuff, I'll take a real nice picture of, of some of the nugs up close and kind of post a post a picture of this ice cream cake. I'll have some time in a little bit. So, what's going on with y'all? You want to start with garden updates? Why don't you you get us rolling there, Coastal Growing OG? How's your garden growing? Let me see if I can open this up. Tell me if you can see. Yeah, we can. Look at that. There we go. That's a bushy looking plant. Yeah, the, the, the one on the this side right here, that's a female. The other ones are... I think uh, there's a male right here, and then I think a male in the back, and I haven't sexed the back one over there. Um, but yeah, they're doing well. They're, uh, I think, honestly, from what I've seen, oh sweet, I freaking dropped the phone. Uh, I think from what I've seen, uh, morphologically, I I'm betting the tall one. That female will be the best one out of all of them because it always happens with these Afghanis. The, the, the one with the stretchy inner node that always looks more like a sour diesel always ends up like 
a lot, lot more potent. It might not yield more or anything, but it will always be more potent. And I just, I'm, I'm thinking this, this one is, uh, is going to be the, the winner on, on all of them. But, uh, yeah, one, once I suss through it all and, and I can make some, I'm going to be crossing that against, like I said, uh, against some purple haze, uh, pollen. And then I'll be trying to throw those seeds through FCP. Uh, and obviously everyone on here is, uh, is getting anything I uh, I make so woot, woot. that's what's going on in my world. <laughs> All right, well, well, I would love to do this. We we have peace of mind farming hopped in, and before we hop over and ask Corey about what's going on in his garden, we'll we'll hop over to Mister Trees and ask him a question. Um, as you are the lead breeder, and I, I figure it's more fun that way. Um, because everybody hears about my shit and what my opinions are all the time anyways. So nobody nobody really cares about my opinion. Uh, at least that's what it feels like in my home. Anyways, um, how long do I need to wait for photo plants to tell me whether or not it's a boy or a girl? You know, it, it, it varies. It needs to reach sexual maturity. So it's got to have several, several node sites. Uh, depends on the size pot. I mean, it depends on how you, you know, how your grow conditions are. I mean, it really can vary a lot. Um, I find that I'm trying to force them to show me sex before they really want to. And I do that by flipping them early, um, you know, taking clones off of them and flipping, you know, flipping them to figure out who's who. A uh, bunch of different ways, keeping them in small pots, the smaller pot you keep them in. Um the more stressed out they'll kind of get when they're when they're vegging out they'll reach the the edges of the pots and they'll like kind of you know sense they should you know get on with it so they'll start uh showing sex but it's you know it's it's several weeks i mean you're you're you know six weeks eight weeks certain cases i mean depends on the strain and the type but you got several weeks there of veg time before you see anything and then you know it depends on the size of the pot and your and your grow environment and what you're going to do uh, my best advice is if you want to know what it is, then, you know, top it a little bit more, keep it in a smaller pot, put it under a little bit more, you know, a little bit more stress and it will, it'll show you sooner. Um, but usually when a plant's growing, like a young seedling, I can go, I don't have a seedling near me, but a seedling will grow straight up. And, I, I have a seedling. I have a seedling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a couple of sets on it, right? So like as it's growing up, you'll see that the sets are even on the plant it'll be boom the nodes will be even branches will come out boom the nodes will be even they'll be coming out at the exact same point and then as soon as that plant reaches maturity they'll start staggering one branch will start coming off low and then right above it they'll start coming off a little stagger <coughs> you'll see it start to stagger off instead of being matched up and having branches come out evenly on both sides when it reaches sexual maturity you'll start seeing the 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 you know the <sighs> You'll start seeing a branch coming out on one side, and then it'll go up a little bit, and then a branch will start coming out on the other side. But a seedling, yeah. a young seedling that's not mature or you know sexually capable of showing you anything, will be they'll be they'll be dead even. They'll be one and one, one and one, one and one, and they'll always come in pairs until it reaches maturity. So if you want to know if your plant's mature, that's when it'll start showing you you know where the nodes don't line up anymore, and you'll know you're getting really close to seeing what the sex is of the plant um it'll happen you know one or two times and then you'll you'll see a, a sex organ pop out of there um when it's ready to go but there's no exact timeline that i can i can say that i've timed it personally and said it takes this long for it to show me sex I, it just it shows me when it shows me and i try to speed it up as much as i can you know i agree 100 percent on the stress i feel like stress drives it to sexual maturity because it's trying to just live uh, and reproduce. And, uh, yeah, uh, you like the plants behind me are like roughly what, four feet tall. And some of them aren't really showing large, uh, reproductive organs. And typically like I can even get a plant to sex out at like 18 inches, you know, pretty, pretty short in a six inch pot. And these are in three uh, gallon pots. And it's, 
just one of those things. It's just if the plant is happy, it's just going to keep trying to live its best life, I guess. Uh, it's not helpful for us, but that's what it wants to do. <laughs> so it's going to do it. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll just, you know, I just accept it and just go with it. And um, if you want to force it, you can just force it into 1212 and that'll do it. I mean, you can force a seedling into 1212 and like drive the, uh, drive the flowering early. I mean, the plant's not going to have a lot of biomass on it, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, I agree. I agree completely about that. So it's a peace of mind farming. When did you put your seeds down? Uh, like when, how old are they? Cause it really, it depends on when you started your outdoor, like some people like me start some outdoor stuff, like maybe in, you know, November. Maybe maybe I get really ballsy and started in in September and like really you know like go big go home you know maybe be an idiot depends on you but my question is like it really depends on the the point in time I was going to clip them and flip them oh well, you'll find out really quick that way <clears throat> I find it's like eight weeks of like hard vegetative growth roundabout is when you can start expecting it and you know what i see most ha often happen wrong is people just jump the gun on it and they like they think it's a boy and they just chop they just like oh it's a boy fuck chop 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 and sometimes it's just like eh, if you wait a little bit longer you would have seen some pistols i know that that brack might look extended or what have you you know it's it is what it is it's 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 funny i think it's better to save a plant than to and to not and people think you, you, it's like how how long before flowers start showing up do you guys do you usually start worrying about pal pollen dropping mr trees you got a while you know you got a while um like you you're you figure you're gonna flip them and then you know a week week and a half maybe two weeks you know you're starting to see some things happening you know, and it's going to take another, you know, week or two of growing before anything's really formed. And sometimes you'll get those males that'll have that, that little flower that'll just hang off and just be like this one flower that is like super pioneer and wants to open up early. You know what I mean? But as soon as you start seeing some actual formed balls, then, you know, the, the, the count is on. It could be any day at that point. Uh, one or two of those things could start opening up. But if you're watching it, I mean, you can see it a mile away and you can watch it and let it hang out for a long time to be sure. You know what I mean? I've had males completely nugged up like they look like friggin' colas, you know, and none of the balls have opened up yet. And, you know, there's no problem. You know, you, you throw that out or whatever, you know, that's, you know, at that point. But sometimes you'll have those pioneer males that'll throw that one or two little little flowers. So just, you know, look at the plants and you know it's usually those lower branches too those that bottom half will throw those little pioneer ones a little quicker but you know look at the plant overall and if you actually see a fully formed ball hanging off of its little stem dangling their clothes like a little eyeball then uh yeah it's time to make a decision whether he's staying or going because he could open it any minute um but you're you you could watch it it's it, it takes several weeks three four weeks before you have to worry about it what's up what's up coastal Jump in. So I pull them uh, as soon as I see male flowers pulling out and actually fruiting, like when they the balls actually start to hang off with like the stems when they actually start to, to get to fruition. That's when I pull them. And it's usually 10 to 14 days into flowering uh, with 12, 12. It depends. Um, the other thing I was geeking out laughing because. It's like the other thing I was thinking about is every chem line and every OGK line freaking goes firm at and and, and you can't ever predict it. I, or I guess you can predict it. At six weeks, there's going to be a ghost male flower somewhere <laughs> and it's going to pollinate it. And by nine weeks, if you pull it early, you know, because you know, chem, chem D, chem 4, chem 91, uh, and OGK. Uh, original EDUK and then all the other EDUK lines, they all do the same thing and they all want to run to like 10 weeks at least. And <laughs> by six weeks, there's some ghost male flower somewhere that pops out and you never can find it. And, uh, and yeah, you always end up 
with one seed somewhere in that. And that's why every single bag of like any chem based thing always you if you buy an O of something, you're gonna find at least one seed. And uh, I just think it's hilarious because it's like you're just fighting the tide with all this <laughs> I think that's super well put, man. I appreciate that. I'm a little bit stoned. I've had a long, tiring day in the sun. It's been beautiful. Probably not as long and tiring day as Mr. Trees, because I feel like he doesn't leave the sun. He's like outside all day long. <laughs> no, I don't. I was out there working my butt off today. You have scale. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, <laughs> or it doesn't suck. It's just part of life. It depends on how you look at it, right? No, yeah, no, yeah. That's uh that's never a that's it's a normal thing around here. You go to any any citrus place and we find scale places, you know, but when it gets ugly. Ooh, it's fun, you know. You can see some cool stuff happening, you know. But it's, you know, it's it's one of those things, and it's, you know, it's a nutritional thing. Those sucking insects are picking on on plants, and it's just one of those things, man. I, I found citrus, Asian citrus psyllid today out out at in East County today. I was looking at some trees. I found some Asian citrus psyllid. You know, got some nasty. That's the bad one. That's the one you don't really want want to see. And then uh, everywhere else you go, you can find scale and woolly aphids and, you know, cottony cushiony scale and, you know, leaf miner, all kinds of funny stuff, especially right now, especially in San Diego, because we don't really have a winter to kill anything either. So everything can kind of just hang out and not die off and just pick up where it left off as soon as it kind of the, the warm weather kicks in, you know. So if you're not on top of it, then. See yeah, okay. that, but th then you like get hit homeo, like you kind of get that homeostasis point where everything's kind of in balance, and then you don't really have too many. You have pressures, but everything seems to be working itself off. It seems like you could you can maintain that better. That being said, you always have pressure. Yeah, which there's was, no, would yeah, be that's tough. Life. Yeah, life. Isn't it though? No such thing well, no, no I get break. I get a break in the winter. Yeah. Like it's it's like I get pressure in the greenhouse, but I have to like like this spring. I've I've been getting a lot of aphid and, and, and a lot of aphid. It, it, they stay on the cover crop mainly, but I've had to do some bug releases and I I, I put out some brown late swing, um, and we did a video on that, which is pretty cool. I mean, they they're voracious motherfuckers, uh, but that that's I'm dealing with that right now, and they're still around and and they're here. They're not like any huge volume or or pressure at this point, but. You know, there was clearly an imbalance to happen, but I get the winter and like things. I, I once I fight off the initial fall, like things try and get somewhere fucking warm. Um, it's it's like it's clean sailing up until fucking you know March, up until that point in time, unless I have other stuff come in. But I, I, I tend to get the area pretty well balanced, and then it seems like I go, my my plants go in there into the flower tent, and then I have like a pretty heavy level of like predatory pests in there like like crazy my like all ro large population of rover beetles all sorts so when that when that soil comes back around and gets back into the greenhouse into these pots i feel like i've like souped it up with some predators <laughs> and then like brought it back so it tends to work out but shit happens man life life goes sideways you know yeah fucking it can no it's even more tough it's even more tough here you know because you know we have like the most we're either like number one or number one and a half or something like that but we got the most diverse plant population on planet earth here in this little san diego little zone more plants from around the world will live here and thrive here more so than anywhere else on the planet like we get a more variety of that and the, and the same it's like the sweet people. spot for climate exactly exactly so yep. that's also yep. the case like with different insects right so we have like pressures from all over and then we have insects that don't have any predators naturally, like the Asian citrus psyllid and other things like that. That just they, they those predators don't really exist here currently, and there's nothing that really is taking that thing down at this moment. We're waiting for nature to recalibrate. And then, like, you know, you you throw in like bad water, and then you know people who you know don't really have a lot of you know know how or or, or time. They you you're you're going to be battling stuff for the rest of your life. There's never really a lull point here. You know what I mean? It's stuff that's battling. So like the best thing to do is to like up your, up your fungal, um, you know, your bark chip zones, your, your fungal capabilities. So you're getting good minerals. 
uh, you're not feeding things that are really powerful and strong and like giving jolts of things all the time because sucking insects pick on plants that have, you know, out of balance sap fluids, you know? So if you do like sap analysis testing and stuff like that, the sugars and the content and the nitrogen and all these different things are, are regulated in the sap. And if it's out, of, it's, if it's a little high on one side or the other, all of a sudden you'll start calling in different, different sucking bugs and things like that. So like when you're pushing plants extra hard by feeding them too often or, other things like that, you're encouraging poor cell development um, because you're not allowing the fungi and the organisms around you to kind of to kind of do your thing and protect and feed it at the ratios that it needs. So its ratios are off and then it's getting picked on. And because it doesn't have those good you know, relationships happening, the cells that build the plant are thin walled and easier sucked on by those sucking bugs like aphids and scale and all those other things. So it's like those trees, the best thing you can kind of do is you know, almost less, you know, in a weird way, you know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta allow them to kind of function on their own and give them, give them a good environment so that they can start cycling their own nutrients and give them things like composts and worm castings that are not very powerful and strong, but are plant ready. And, you know, build up their immune system. In other words. Yeah. And, and then time of year feeding and stuff are, are a big thing. Like you don't want to do things at certain times because you're going to encourage certain things um i mean there's all kinds of stuff that we'll never learn the in all the intricacies you know what i mean and how to outrun them and how to it's always relate. changing we're exactly. gonna fucking try i'll tell you and, what and life wants <laughs> to fucking live you know it wants to do its thing you know and and, and we would just want to control it that's right that's right <laughs> that's right there's no you know it's everybody wants to eat we all get families to feed we all got to do our jobs we all got to find a way and we're all going to do what it takes to make that happen and you know, the insects and the predators and the little microbes, all that shit's no different. You know what I mean? When it comes down to it. So everybody's going to be fighting and battling and you going here and you're going to go here. And sometimes we might be up and other times we're not, but it's just like, yeah, work on having a healthy rhizosphere or a gut bacteria, you know, and you're going to have, you know, a better chance at, at fighting those things. And like that lemon tree, it, it doesn't have any bark chips under it. It's, it's just sitting there. It's been, it's, you know, probably been vulnerable, fed, you know, you know, liquids and other things and funny things going on with it. It's just, yeah, you don't, you know, it's not something that is ideal for its rhizosphere. So it's getting picked on by sucking insects. It's no surprise, you know? So, um, Hey, can I show my plants real quick so I can uh, shut my lights off? They're going to, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hey, Hey, and Corey, <laughs> Corey, if you yeah. want to shoot, I, I totally forgot to message you. My apologies. If next week, next time you want to shoot a video and then just send it to me, um, we can we can make sure that it's there, so you don't have to fuck around too much. If that's a little bit easier, I and that's that's cool. I may take you up on that. The thing is, is I usually have my lights go out at ten, and they start getting saggy and droopy, as you know. So I just kind of oh. wanted to. And plus two, I got this one, and maybe somebody here can help me with it. But so obviously they're kind of all saggy, droopy, but they're all looking fantastic as far as you know the so leaves and. Try and really slow your camera a little bit. And if you could do me a little I, I, bit of a... I, I just want to get to this one. I'm sorry, London. I'll focus in on this one real strong. But this is driving me nuts. This plant is just getting worse and worse. I've potted it. I just don't know what the story is with it. Can you see how it's like... Like it's clawing? Focus. How is it being watered? As far as like how often or... How often is it being watered on the drip table? Like, is it being flooded on a table, or is that table just serving the purpose of just holding the plant? I I I hand water it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, um, I would just repot it in something with more uh with more uh porous um material, like like. I would literally just add a ton of uh, cocoa and um, perlite. perlite. Um, and uh, you think you it's an aeration it, issue? I mean, that plant is going all sorts of weird. Like it's got hooking on one side, it's got super flat leaf on the other. That's what it's I'm saying. Like, like some leaves, you know, what, like, like some see the leaves hook on are, the like, right, and then the other leaf at the front left, like at the same stage point, is isn't hooked at all. You done any like? Really... Have you done any um, like, like 
spraying or feeding with liquid liquid stuff or anything like that like when when things claw downward you get like nitrogen toxicity you know sometimes in some cases sometimes you we spray things you start getting those those kind of warbled up leaves as they're trying to develop they, they get misshapen i it's haven't done any it, like, kind of i haven't done anything foliar on these and i haven't done anything as far as feeding and watering different from any it, of the other plants has it been in that position That's, most I, of the time in the tent like has it usually been right there in that center spot no i've i've moved them all over I, and and the, okay. like last Dude, last episode, I was starting to notice that clawing, and it looked like it was coming out of it. But then it started looking weird again, so I up-potted it and, you know, thought that that might help. All it did was send it into a frenzy. Wow. Yeah, it almost like it almost looks like a root. Could there, could it, like, I see clawing like that can happen sometimes if, like, one side of the pot's really cold. Or, like, there's, you know what I mean? Like, it's sometimes... Sure it's like the, and you're feeding in the one i don't know you got but any, I, i've seen you got any loops or anything funny to look at the the leaves on the on the veins or anything for yeah you haven't spotted spider or... mites or anything like that have you? i i'm all over the plants for that stuff too especially we seeing stuff like this i haven't seen anything and i've gone so far as um using the microscope what, what's the what's the soil like i mean is the soil like you know, is it is it spongy? Is it wet? Is it um, is it good drain? Is it too you dry? Know, I mean, it's, is, like what is it's pretty dry. Here? It could be. I'd say it's on the drier side, if anything. Um, you know, I try not to go super heavy on the watering. Your fingers are um, on your camera lens a little bit. I don't know. Brother. I mean, I guess I guess I'd have more problem with it if Somebody if it was more than one plant. Something. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I don't yeah. see any of that. On, I still got you guys. Yeah, I think yeah, I you lose you when that. I go in my tent. My problem is, I think I think my problem with all of this is is that it's the only one, and I'm doing everything exactly the same to all the rest of them. You know, and yeah, I don't know. You're doing a good job. Don't don't beat yourself up. This shit happens to all of us. We all it's deal with this. I may never get an answer for this, but it'll drive me nuts. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll what eat it, you alive. But at least, at least you have the balls to show it to everyone. And so, you know, it happens to all of us. Like so at I some hate, point, I hate like fabric. I'm pots. definitely not ashamed of it. I just want to figure it out if I could. You know, <laughs> if it was me, I would take it out of the fabric pot and I'd put it in a hard walled pot. That way, you know, it would hold on to the moisture better. And we could kind of figure out if, if you know what's what the deal is, because like the if it's if it's throwing those weird claws and the leaves look funny and there's no bugs on it like that and there's you know no foliars or sprays been done to it. None of the other ones are having a having a hell of a time with it, and that tells me it's something in the root system, right? Like it's something something that the command center of that plant is messed up. You know what I mean? In, in some aspects, so. Like, uh, is something happened to it? Is it like you know? Is it too dry? Is it whatever? But you can re you can you can bring back all the integrity to that to that rhizosphere by putting some walls on it and keeping it you know keeping it in an old fashioned plastic pot to see if that does any difference. But if it was me and it was looking all junky like that and I didn't have any answers for it, I'd probably isolate the son of a bitch and uh yeah. figure out what was going on that way you know what i mean before before it got it got the boot you know what i mean because that's it ain't cool and that's that tells me something's going on you know somewhere somewhere in control center you know what i mean that's control center problem i thought the I same thing and i thought maybe up pot and it would have helped and i you know yeah. usually if i'm having a struggle in any way shape or form if i up pot them generally within a week or so i can try to get them back but up potted were they pretty were, were the roots looking pretty good when you up potted how did the roots look the roots looked all the same i mean i didn't notice anything crazy on it sometimes i wish it like, was still in plastic so i could pull it and look at the roots but yeah you know i have uh, 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 your plastic box so so uh i that just reminded me uh what Tyler was saying, 
made uh, a lot of sense because that was the first thing that went through my mind was root rot. Or uh, it, it, the, the plant's either overwatered or underwatered. The, so that's why I responded saying, make it be able to be drier. But it could be that it's underwatered and it's not holding. But what you can do to figure out if it's root rot and it's overwatered is just pull the plant out of the container and then just look at the bottom of the container. And if it's brown and you see the brown roots, there you go. Uh, and like, I, it just occurred to me, I was like, this is the simplest thing ever. Like, why not just do it that way? You know, figure out the solution right there. But uh, that's my little uh, thing I just realized in the middle of him, uh, like speaking about that, because yeah, I agree a hundred percent on all that. <clears throat> I like that isolating that plant. I think that I think that's an excellent decision at this point. I really like something's not go not going right right there. And regardless, it's just like it's you don't have to terminate it. You know, it's not killing the plant. No, the it plant's be... just pissed off. I mean, if I could get it back, I'd love to do that. For a man with too many plants. <laughs> <laughs> never have enough oh no he, god damn it Corey! you like he always hits the wrong buttons like it's like i forgot to hit mute and he like closed every fucking time like every time oh there he is welcome back hey <laughs> at least once an episode at least at least once at least at least once before the episode and then once during the episode oh, i'll do it a bunch of times before <laughs> the episode <laughs> <laughs> so why what what's your what's your hate for fabric pots there mr trees it seems like you got a little um, bit of a, a, they, a dislike they don't hold for them. to the moisture properly and they knew that so they started lining them with a plastic liner <laughs> After a while, they, they figured that out, and they don't hold themselves up. They're structurally unsound. You can't slide a pot, a, a plant, in and out of them very easily without fucking doing this whole hip scot dance thing and having weird tools that you don't need. Um, they... <laughs> Yeah, every time I put something in a fabric pot, I really, you know. It really just sounds I, like it pisses you off it. by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I always regret like, it. Um, never had a good time. Yeah. I, like I mean, got I through with one. I have all my old fabric pots are outside and they got vegetables in them. But I took saran wrap <laughs> and I wrapped the outside with plastic. So, <laughs> so, like, so really, it doesn't, you know, it defeats the freaking whole purpose of the whole thing <laughs> in, in the whole point. Homemade but, plastic pot. I, I have a. I, that's how I roll, you know. That's that's the way it should be, you know. I have a solution for fabric pots. It's basically, <clears throat> excuse me. Use them once and throw them the fuck away. <laughs> that's basically how usable they are. Uh, I like using them. Um, they're very cheap if you go on Amazon and you buy bulk fabric pots. They're cheaper than buying the plastic pots. I mean, I used to do commercial and. Those little six inch pots, I mean, you could do four per square foot and you could easily end up with 400 in a room and that would easily end up over a thousand dollars for these containers. And it's like the fabric containers, especially going and upsizing and doing larger plants, you can do a lot less. And uh, and so it, it is good, but it's like, yeah, they do dry out really quick. And then what you end up with is where uh, you end up with that night, like basically cannabis eats a lot of nitrogen really fast. And so it, it, but it doesn't eat all the phosphorus and potassium. And then it ends up with this lockout where you start to see it where towards the end of it drying out, it starts to uh, look like it's overfed. And so then people do all sorts of things to try to fix this problem. And the reality is all you need to do is just flush. Uh, and uh, I just see that a lot. And uh, that's just something that I, I've been really well aware of. On top of the, the, the pots tend to hold the salts on the outside. And you'll see like white on the outside of the containers. And that's just the salts that have just dried out on the outside of the container. And, and frankly, on top of that, 
for IPM purposes, you know, the whole idea that you could be transferring insects from one grow to another, it's like it's not worth a one dollar and something spent fabric pot. So I think they are they have a place, but I think they are kind of like something that you you really can't rely on. Yeah, so, yeah I, uh, that, my wife is saying, yeah, you just treat them as disposable items. That this, that's it. Every week, this is going the I've, same for me. You I know, like liquids with them. <laughs> fuck. Every week, this goes the same with me. It's like, hey, I, you know, I do my whole cloning thing. It's like I put all this stuff in the water. And she's like, no, you got to put it in the fucking water, <laughs> like just fucking water. And then this week, it's like, you know, every like just just I, I wanted to highlight this while you were shit talking fabric pots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not how many fabric pots do you see there? I love it. Tell you what, I'll I'll give a free pack of seeds away to whoever can get the number right because you're not going to. There's a lot. Okay. There's there's just no fucking way. There are pots in pots, on pots, round pots. Fabric um, no. pots are, those that those are cannabis cannabis pots. You know what I mean? Like that is like cannabis growers and cannabis people have adopted this air this air pruning and these these fabric pots like really really more so than any other you know industry you know out there. Um, most any nursery, I mean, you go to Home Depot, you know, Bonnie plants that are in those little plastic little plastic pots, right? You know what I mean? Like if it if it was really that much better, you would see more plants and trees shipped around and sold in bags like that you know what i mean and you don't well it, it, i it's mean not, it's not one of those things see the root system on trees encased in a burlap sack typically upon shipping traditionally they used they used to keep them in burlap sacks and i still have a nursery here here right down the road from me that's old-fashioned like that and they keep all their citrus and burlap sacks and let me tell you that sucks ass <laughs> uh, they, they, like planting them and dealing with that and they they degrade and fall apart in my hand i've had more root balls fall apart in my hands from those burlap wrap things that are just too old uh like there's a million things that that's wrong with that in every aspect of the game i i personally have pots out there five gallon pots one gallon pots two gallon pots they're <laughs> probably like 25 years old that I've Ooh. used for like 20, 25 years and, and counting. You know what I mean? Like I can no bullshit. You know what I mean? More tons more. Where than you, years where old, do you get you know? these? Where do you get these pots? Cause that's, that's kind of the thing is, is the pots that I get that are plastic from my store. Like they're right. fucking terrible. They just yeah. shatter right away. Like yeah, those they don't make it flexible ones. You even no, but even pot. like the bigger ones, like they're just shit. The better pots are the are the fabrics for. Shit, for I might have store. a date on this one. Hang on, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking older than him. Got it from my grandpa. <laughs> my <blood. laughs> Fuck. You must have some old tools at home. Uh, yeah, everybody needs to have some old tools at home. <laughs> No, you're both wrong. There's there's more than that. Ah! Sorry. Sorry. 69 and 87 is not the correct question or answer. So what you know what I'll do is I'll take a minute here because I think this is important and I, I and I've been pushing this out a little bit lately. Check out the unicorn cup in um, so check this the out. Kootenays. These two pots right here have stickers on them from when I when I got them. At when when these were plants at the nursery that I worked at when I was a youngster, I was like 20. These things, these two pots right here, have probably been around for. I haven't worked at the nursery for 10 years, and I got these, like I don't know, probably like the first couple of years that I worked there, and I worked there for 10 years. So these are almost <laughs> 20 years old. These two five gallon pots, they don't look all that pretty. They're a little dusty, but when I polish them up, they'd be good. But not one of them is cracked or broken. They're solid. And I mean, it's like, fuck. I got this. This it's got a little peel right here in this. This got a tiny little See, peel. No, on the top. you gotta get rid of that now. It's, but it's no, this one's got two more years in it, man. You know? <laughs> it's got, it's got more 13 years more one. years you know, at least. He's got. But it's still, you know, it's still stronger and will stand up better than that damn fabric pot. And I'll use it before I use a fabric pot, you know? So it's just interesting, you know. I, I don't I don't care about the whole fabric pot thing. My dad always said the best tool in the toolbox is the one that works for you, that you know how to use. You know what I mean? And and some people grow dank weed. I mean I've I've probably smoked 
tons of dank weed that were grown in fabric pots. You know what I mean? That's not the. I, I don't my, think the pot's going to depend on the success of dank weed. I think. Yeah, it's like the, it's more things. the grower, you know, at that point, and and it's like, but if they just make my job harder as a grower, at in general, it makes things harder to transplant, makes things harder to water, makes things harder to feed makes things harder to to like stack up next to each other it just makes things harder so i just don't use that i, I can throw i can carry friggin 10 plastic pots i can put them all in my fingertips like little one gallons and carry like three or four at a time you know what i mean and like really get through without anything structuring yeah you got that square boy you know what's up uh but that it looks yeah it just makes shit. everything harder for me you know so i don't i don't use them for i don't i don't pay for them i'll use them if i have like them lying around or if i need something in an emergency but Shit, I'll go buy a plastic pot before that, you know, for sure. These are 15, this is 15 fucking years old. Look at this. Fall there apart. I finally, I finally have to retire it after 15 fucking years. But, um, yeah, the shit eventually does fall apart. But, yeah, it happens. It's always tragedy because you're like, ah, damn it. They were $3.50 a piece and you got to buy a lot of them. Oh, you but could I get another run out of that. <laughs> yeah it's one of those I'd limp it, limp it through rim, push it through another little put some tape around the rim tape that up push yeah it he's down. another run <laughs> 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 no, oh my here, God. you know it's it's to each his own you know i'm not i'm not here to throw shade on any of that stuff it's just over the over the years i really no i'm insulted lots of nurseries and no you made good points i mean they're all good points. You can't pick the bags up without everything falling apart, really. I mean, unless the yeah. roots are in control completely, you're going to end yeah. up with a mess. Yeah. That makes a great point. You definitely have to water a lot more with them. So unless you're right on top of it, they're drying out a lot. I mean, you make a lot of great points. I I, I don't know why I like them. <laughs> I, I just heard, London, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I hear that every day anyways, no matter what I do. What, the, London, the you're doing it wrong. Why are people yeah, you go. That yep. to you? Why are people yep. telling you that I'm doing it wrong? They're, they're chasing fabric me, pots. telling me. I like fabric <laughs> pots because, like, like fungus gnats and stuff can't go in through the bottom, right? They don't have the holes in the bottom so that more insects and root dwelling insects can't like sneak up through and like have little houses under there. And you're like, you know, you're battling stuff like that. Every once in a while, I'll throw a plastic pot inside a fabric pot to seal off the bottom for fungus gnat control if i have like a fungus gnat outbreak I'll, I'll 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 use them for that you know what i mean or i'll bag the bottom just so that i can kind of you know keep that so, that's one, so basically that's one they're part of your ipm only yeah exactly <laughs> they're, you know in, in rare cases but that's that's something i have used them for successfully you know and that's there are every tool is usable it's just you know what works for you yep. we were discussing ipm last week and i was discussing uh using uh perlite as like a liner uh, to prevent fungus nets uh, because when they try to go in, it, it breaks their uh, 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 exoskeletons up and it screws them up. And for whatever reason, it really actually works because it, it's like glass. It's like if someone was walking on like a whole bunch of glass shards. And uh, we also discussed, um, uh, this was interesting, uh, painting, um, the stems of the uh, the plants. And this is really interesting because I went and talked to my farming family and then I also looked it up on the internet. We're both right and we're both wrong in a way. I don't know how this hell, the hell this happened. It, I went down this rabbit hole of um, internet bullshit and with my family and all the farmers that I've, I'm related to. They basically told me this. They so they run like a few thousand acres of farmland, and uh, they said that they do the painting on the plants uh, for for ants and for um, rat and iguana um, prevention. But then I've heard other people say that they only paint the plants just to make them look pretty, especially in tourist areas. And that it doesn't help with rat, rat and iguana pre pre prevention. The whole point of it is if a rat eats a piece of like a, a, a banana, 
you can't like people would try to cut off the piece of a banana uh, to try to make it clean. But because it wicks up the bacteria or virus, because, you know, it's it's a plant, it's a wick it naturally wicks everything. Uh, people would still get sick. And so they thought that they could do that. They also tried to wrap plants in aluminum, um, like metal, like flashing. Uh, and uh, so it became a, and uh, it was for what you said, uh, Tyler, you were very correct. They did do it. They told me for anti-desiccation properties for the, uh, for the stems. And then they also did <laughs> Some of them thought it was good for uh, anti-pest applications, and then they also did it for just vanity. And it, it was kind of funny to just see, like, it, all these people that I talked to all been like, no, no, that's wrong. This is what it is. This is what it is. This is what it is. And it's, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's the tale of you ask, you ask a thousand, you know, people, and you're going to get that whole, you know, answer. There's, there is zero, zero prevention of insects with that white latex paint stuff an insect ant can crawl right up that no matter what color it is you're not stopping it from crawling up that trunk you're not stopping an iguana you're not stopping a rat i've seen it i can show you countless evidence of of that happening so like as for pest con prevention unless you're putting some sort of pesticide inside of that so that if something eats the bark it, it, it is discouraging or you know, it's a contact thing. There's zero pest effects from it at all. Vanity, for sure, because yeah. people think that looks really sharp, especially in those desert zones. They like get that like green, that white stuff. But like 100%, it's sunscreen. That's all it is. White reflects light. And those old, those old friggin' um, aluminum, you know, canisters, those things, people still try to deploy for rats and other things. <coughs> but I have, I have cameras watching rats and squirrels jump from like a six foot standstill into traps and up into trees and, and do their thing. And they find other ways, but yeah, those little slick metal things are hard, but then they create this microclimate inside where the trunk is in between the metal yep. and the thing, which other insects and things kind of build their homes and it becomes too moist and it becomes this whole other, you know, problem. You know what I mean? When you start putting stuff on the trunk of the tree. So like right. all in all, you shouldn't put shit on the tree. Number one, I mean, on the trunk, because the trunk needs to do its thing. But there's so many ways. I mean, so many funny things. Like, I've heard people say so many things over the years, like, about what what those what they're doing and how they're painting them and all those other stuff. But the only thing it really works for is sunscreen. That's it. And to look good. You know what I mean? That's the only thing it actually works for. So um, It was hilarious because the last person I talked to was my mom, and she lived on a on a big farm and she was like what the fuck she was like hell no yeah people think it works to keep rats and stuff off of it but it doesn't do jack shit they just use it to make it look pretty she was just like what is hell i was dying <laughs> they used to have like all these like crystalline whatever i forget all the ingredients but there used to be some toxic ass ingredients and in a lot of that yeah. stuff that, that they used to put into those into those paints and people used to paint their trees with it you're painting with all this toxic ass shit. So then some somebody, I forget who it is, but somebody started making an organic water-based one specifically for fruit trees. And it's like a tan color and it's, and I forget what it is, but it's like you mix it yourself and it's like all natural and nice and you can paint your tree for, you know, if it's got a bunch of sunburn problems and, and that helps. But it's hard to find, you know, it's hard to find any, number one. And then it's number two, it's just, it's hard to find any, real information about what it actually does you know with with anything in farming you know that's that's it's all of us you know playing around and doing our thing you know it's always something to learn there's always something to try you know it's a crazy world you got these right here you see these it's a low quat seed oh yeah oh look at that low quat popping out of its out of its skin look at this one how, how long have you been working on germinating those? bang a -rang, huh? Um, about two weeks. Oh, that's pretty you quick. That's yeah, nice. I got, yeah, I got. Because I know some apple and some other seeds can take a really epically long time. Like, you got to, like, cold, put them in the fridge things for a that, month yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like, things what, that need cold will take a lot longer. Like, things that actually need a chill time or a rest time, a rest period. 
those things take really, you know, you, they need a little bit of time to settle in, you know, whether they get refrigerated or cold or not, they still need to rest. But like tropical plants, like friggin' mangoes and friggin' loquats and avocado, things that like don't freeze, you know what I mean? That stay going all the time. All you need is a really, really nice ripe fruit that's fully mature. And you can take that seed out and dry it out, and you know, within a week or two, germinate it and it will pop. You know what I mean? It'll it'll do its thing like right away, which is way cool. Same thing with cannabis. There's some cannabis that's, you know, the equatorial stuff will friggin' pop inside the inside the bud on the plant. It'll actually friggin' do that in a lot of cases, which is nuts. And then other I've stuff seen some of those sit around. Yeah, go ahead. I, I've said I've seen some of those photos. It's pretty epic. Yeah, and that yeah, and that's those are those are normally like equatorial sativa type type plants or plants that don't you come from a colder region per se, you know what I mean? You know, in their, in their lineage, you know, and the ones that do, they come from different places. Those other things, they need more of that, that fridge time or, or to sit around in the, in the cooler or dry it out for a month or two, or a few months before you can actually, you know, get a good germ rate on them, you know, uh, germ rate will go up on some over time. Some, the germ rates great right away and will go down, you know, as the longer it sits, you know what I mean? So it kind of, it's really kind of strange. So with with all plants, I kind of I you know I kind of adopt that. I've got some Honeycrisp apple seeds that I'm gonna germinate this year. They've been in the fridge for the last six weeks. They'll be in another couple weeks, and then I'll take those out and I'll and I'll germinate those, and hope hopefully they'll go that way. Um, but whenever I don't don't you know wait on an apple or or get an apple seed cold, they don't like they don't like to come up as easy. You know, some will. Yeah, they don't like it. <laughs> I've I've been trying to plant, um, pop. Oh, I gotta look it up. Um, fuck, it's it's like a, I gotta look it up in in a minute. It's some sort of a vine, but it needs like some cold for the cold time as well. And it was just like I've tried three times so far. I'm like I gotta I gotta go again. I gotta try again. And I think I'm just yeah. like being impatient, you know. And then sometimes I put stuff down. It's just like and go. And it's uh-huh. like you just just don't care. Yes. It's you know. Chill, Got chill. Wet. <laughs> Take yeah. it super easy. What are you smoking on today, Corey? You look like you rolled up oh, some uh, bats. I am smoking. This is Juice Box, which is uh, from James Loud. It's Gelato Forty One by White Runs, and it's it's dry but not cured. But I kind of like it a little bit tacky like that. So I can't seem to put it down. I keep smoking on it because it's got that mm-hmm. nice, fresh, sticky flavor. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Love it that it's way. Like candy. Yeah, it looks, it looks I need to grab a lighter. Hang on, my lighter's dead. Hang on. Terrible. Lack of pepper. So don't mind me if I'm in my own world. <laughs> Uh, so how's the chat doing today? We we we're having a fun time. So where are you got like I I've got clones cut. I'm going I'm probably like I don't know. I should have sex. I think I have sex, but I don't know if I have sex. You know, I'm probably about 3 weeks before I'm like really 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 confident on it. Before I see before, you know, I'm not going to rush it. And if I find a really good man, you know, I'll keep him around. Uh, my house is full of women. It's like I got, I got, I got my wife, two daughters, um, my, and then upstairs, my dad with lives with my stepmom and my, uh, and and my little sister. So it's like it's all girls. It's just a lot more of them. So I like, I got to keep a couple stud males around once in a while, and you know, kick it. <laughs> I'm just so on nice. sex on a couple, but. But not not on all of them. I think I got a little yeah. while to go. I you know I, I I'd like to get going on them, but it, it you know I still haven't really. I don't think I'm not. In my opinion, I don't want to take clones off them yet. I don't think they're quite big enough. Yeah, mine are mine are actually doing pretty good. They're they're in the front there. I don't know if you can see it really well. Let's see. I, I need to get my longer cord so that I can reach it because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it all the way there. You flower in three gallon too, don't you? Yeah, I go all the way through. Can you see me okay? Am I there? 
There you are. Yep. Cool. cool. Let me just raise this cord up. So these are his. One, two, three, four. And you can see, can you see down to the bottom of the plant on the screen? Yeah, they're How big. How far do you get on it? Yeah, they're pretty big. So they're like, they're up to my waist here. I've stripped most of the lowers out of most of them. This one's got a little bit extra. But they're doing really, really well. And they're not, they're not quite there yet. They're starting to smell. This one looks... Looks quite masculine, but we'll find out soon. So I got one that looks looks male. This one I really want to be female. But again, we still have very even noting. It's not even doing the spacing all that much yet. These are still really even as well. Yeah, those are nice and big. They're doing well. They're, these are only in two-gallon pots. Um, and they probably won't ever go any larger than a two-gallon pot these will stay as mums for most of the time. And then, of course, you see the hundreds of fabric pots that are all floating around me, which is a pain in the butt, which is pretty good. I like this this plant over here. You see the big yellow flowers? Are, uh, that's rutabaga from last season that I'm flowering out to seed, which is fun. All sorts of cool stuff. Broccoli, the Syrah, the Velvet Skies. I've got, uh, what is this? Acapulco Gold's going in. These are actually the cross of Lemon Kush Headband and a Land Race Acapulco Gold, which is good. I got a whole big ass tomato too to eat. I mean, I've been excited. It's been a good season so far. I'm excited for it to be like cheerful and nice and, and, and maybe actually get some fucking sun instead of the wicked, horrible, gross rain that we've had the whole fucking last little while. It's been just disgusting. Like, this is the first, it's May 2 4 weekend. And this is the first time I've been able to fucking open up my um, my greenhouse at all. And then, so I'm going to be able to leave it out tonight because it's not raining at all. And everything, get nice airflow and get like full sun without a greenhouse cover on it. And everything just, just pops. It just blows up. Got to bring everything out and put it, spread, spread it out into the garden and to the other sides. I've got way more tomatoes than I want. I've got like whole big tomatoes ready to pull off the vine right now, which is pretty sick. I should pull one off and you guys can see them because they're like ready to go. Yeah, I saw some of those in your video, man. Those look great. You're cranking them. That's good. You're on top of it, man. You're not doing anything wrong. Just so you know, you're doing it, bro. That's the, that's the key. You're doing it, man. Look at this big fucking thing. Isn't it cool? Boom. That's beautiful. I've dude. got a Look question. You know? I got a question for Tyler. Yo. My wife tries to grow San Marzano oh. tomatoes every year. And the damn hornworms keep getting at them. How the hell? Because I don't do outdoor growing. I do indoor. I've only ever done indoor. <laughs> How the hell do you control hornworms on tomatoes? Uh, because they are terrible out here. All right. So hornworms are a bitch. They hide in the soil, too. So, like, they, like, hide in the soil. And, you know, that's why you can't find them sometimes and, and all kinds of weird stuff. They'll get big and ugly and fun. BT, man. You got to spray them with BT. If you're going to spray them with anything, you got to spray them with some okay. BT. And that solves the problem right there. You know what I mean? They'll be done. They'll be done right there. Kills all worms. Safe to use. All that stuff. You probably do it once or Bacillus. twice. Bacillus. Yep. Bacillus. Bacillus. Yep. 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 You can get okay. you can get any BT for cheap anywhere on the planet. You know what I mean? Just use that. That's done. Or you know, get your get your little tomatoes. You know, doing their thing. And you can always use my mosquito net. You know, tactics. You know what I mean? Where you you put them in a little mosquito net tunnel. And then it keeps the moths uh, from flying because the worms come from moths, man. So all worms are like moth larvae, you know, or butterfly larvae. So they're flying in and they're visiting your plants and laying the eggs and, you know, and then they're hatching and, and doing their thing. So if you eliminate them to be able to touch your plants, you know what I mean? That that solves a lot of the problems, too. But things like tomatoes need some pollination help and other things. So screening them off too early can be a problem. You know what I mean? But if you've got big tomatoes 
and you got tomatoes that are already set on there and you can set up a little green hut, you don't have to spray them with nothing. You can get your tomatoes to the end, you know, no problem. Uh, but if you just spray them with BT and do nothing else, it solves the problem. So you're basically saying just have a greenhouse and get rid of all the bullshit. <laughs> well, if you, have, if you have a greenhouse, that would be great. But still, you have to have it open. You know, you have to have some pollination stuff. You got to have some bugs, you know, to kind of fly around, you know. So, but yeah, now get spend 10 bucks, get some BT and friggin' spray those things once or twice. And you're and you'll never have that problem. You know, you end the yeah, problem. I, I have experience with uh, BT and uh, BS. Uh, people might not know Bacillus fieriscus and then Bacillus uh, thuringiensis. Uh, those are chemicals that are derived from bacteria that eat the gut of uh, the uh, insects. And uh, I used to actually uh, run massive contracts for like thousands of acres uh, for the federal government applying those things. So I know exactly what you're talking about and. Uh, it's it's funny that that you, that you actually mentioned that because I never thought of that as a as a useful application for cannabis because it was or even uh, tomatoes because yeah, tomato. yep. it was always to me something you just used to kill uh, basically pests like uh, mosquitoes and stuff because that's what they typically utilize it for is yep. mosquito yeah, application. mosquito dung yep all kinds of stuff has dung. different you know bacillus species like that in there but yeah like for tomatoes like. I don't like you. I mean, you can use it on cannabis and people have been doing it for years. I've done it, you know, hundreds of times, you know, but I don't like spraying my cannabis with, with BT, even though you could. Um, that's why I always do my, my, my screen technique. You know what I mean? I use the, the mosquito netting or, or a hoop house type situation where I can kind of screen off the moths and then I don't have to spray them with anything because cannabis doesn't need a pollinator from a, from a bee or somebody to, to make it do its thing. You know what I mean? So I don't need any outside help so I can screen those SOBs off early and they don't have any bug traffic at all. And I don't, have any, I don't have to spray them or do nothing. You know what I mean? Which is nice. But BT, shit. If you, if you got a, too big of a plant, you can't screen off. Or <coughs> you don't want to do that, you just spray with BT. You're, you're good to go, man. Especially for tomatoes. That's that's easy. That's good. That worked really good. Solve your problem. Well, thank you. That's a good piece of information. Yep. How long does the BT last folia? Uh, it depends on how hot it is and if it's really moist out and like conditions outside, I'd say, you know, somewhere between 10 and 30 days. No kidding. You know, somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. I've seen, I've seen it only last two to three days in applications and large scale applications, but I guess yeah. it's probably the dosage. Yeah. Dose it. Like uh, I said, m like do, do heat, like like moisture content, like all these different things, wind, all that stuff. In they theory, place. though, if you're knocking down whatever you're knocking down, it could last 30 days, but you need to apply. It only lasts living for two. I follow. I, yeah. I think I got a handle on what you guys are saying. That yeah, makes it'll, sense. It'll tell you, too, on the bottle. I don't have a bottle handy because I don't, I don't use it as often anymore. But, like, it'll tell you on the bottle, like, you you know, do it every two weeks or, you know, this will last 30 days at this ratio and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And it must depend um, on what you're trying to fight, too. Exactly. I mean, and with cannabis yeah. and other things, some things, like, sometimes you got to go, like he said, it might not last more than two or three days a week if you did it every week. You know what I mean? It might it might tuck her out. And also, like, um, like those biological type sprays, all kinds of them, you know, BT, spinosad, any other bacillus, all those things that are just those biologicals, when they are kept in like like hot and cold conditions, like if it's sitting in, a, oh. in an old hot shed, it loses potency. If it's really, really cold, like those types of conditions where the temperature fluctuates, that's going to affect your potency too. So it might only last two days if it's a real old bottle, right? But if you got a fresh bottle and it's like stored at room temperature consistently, you know what I mean? And you're in like a, you know, a dry-ish climate, you might get 30 days out of it, you know what I mean? Which is kind of cool. We we had we had those problems where, it, like, it, you buy it when you're doing, like, large-scale applications. We're talking about thousands of acres, so you're buying 55-gallon drums or even larger. Those big old uh, plastic containers of, of, of you know, uh, fertilizer or uh, 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 BT or whatever you're trying to get. Um, and one thing what that was a hell was if you fucking leave the damn barrel in a cold warehouse, like if you end up at the end of the season with extra freaking barrels, 
that would start to crystallize up and it would be totally useless because and, and, and the contractor could try and use like you can try to heat put like hot water and mix it dilute the shit out of it but you'll never be able to get it to work right and uh it was always just basically wasted out um and yeah that that's that's one real well yeah it, you you gotta keep it really really happy um the other thing we used to use was nail it um the EPA doesn't really like to uh, issue grants for uh, usage of it anymore, but uh, that stuff will kill bugs faster than anything. I wouldn't put it on flowering plants, but uh, for large scale application or, or uh, you know, like and like large scale application, I would probably look at that if you're trying to knock down bugs. But uh, it, 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 it's a pretty nasty uh, chemical. <laughs> I just try and use as much labs as I can. And, I, you know, if you have fungus now, that works too. Are you using pucks? I love them. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, it's a Swiss chart. A bunch of Swiss what chart size? Starts. I'm doing a bunch What's... of Swiss chart. I got to get some chart going. I'm low on greens. I got to get some greens pumping, man. Got to get some greens pumping. Potting up these low quads. Got my Swiss chart potted up during this little talk. It's been productive, man. I feel good. I feel good about what I'm doing here. Smoking the Kandahar. I'm assessing it's, it's stone. It's really mellow. You know, it's keeping me from, you know, rambling on. It's nice. It's good stuff. But we, but we like it when you ramble. It's, it's enjoyable. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Show, right? kind of, we, hey, we kind of invited you here to ramble. So could you, like, get some of the weed for us, please? Just, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's good, man. It's definitely got that dark chocolate thing to that to that one, which is really interesting. It's cool. I love it. Is that that colorful shit. one that you showed on, on Instagram? No, no. Yeah, no, that's a different one. And that okay. and that one might shake out to be that way, too, because now that he said dark chocolate and I'm smelling this one, like, it's got a lot of the similar characteristics to that purple one that's hanging. You know what I mean? Okay. So okay. that one's hanging up. Um, but, yeah, it's it's very, it's an interesting thing that kind of popped out of there that I didn't really expect, you know, which is kind of cool. You know, it's, yep. it's interesting. It's always fun when that happens. You know, you're like, wow, I just... I didn't see that coming, you know. <laughs> so that's good. I like that. But it's got this real dark chocolate thing on the back end. Like I can taste it right now. Like I, I took a rip a second ago. And yeah, it tasted like dark chocolate and all. But right now, it's really like I ate a, some sort of like a Hershey kiss or something, you know, like a dark so chocolate. So you're getting something totally new from either of the two parents that you've tasted. Yeah, well, yeah, there's no chocolatiness. Well, I mean, I wouldn't consider ice cream cake chocolatey at all. I mean, it's got a it's got a thing to it, but it's, I wouldn't consider that chocolate in any way. And the Kandahar itself, like I haven't smoked a whole ton of that. I'm going to smoke a bunch of it this this season um, with the pure stuff that we're growing out. But I didn't I didn't see any dark chocolate in, in the ones that I had grown out already or anything that was like I'd say, oh, that's chocolate, you know. Um, but being that it is like really because all the, the pure Kandahars are really more squat and the node spacing is pretty tight, you know, together, tighter together than other things. And, um, you know, Bubba's and stuff are, are kind of like that. And those old Afghanis are, are like that. And the chocolate hides in there, you know. So, I, I mean, I guess it's I guess it's it's hiding in there for sure. But it's definitely not something that I expected. And it's not something that I'd see. And then the prominent like the how strong it is on the aftertaste, you know, is like really, really kind of cool. You know, it's really, it's really kind of cool. I can, see, I can see why he gave it to me. You know what I mean? Because it's got a, it's got a kind of a cool thing, you know, with it. It's like, you look at it, it's not the, the most super flashy thing in the world. It looks really good. I mean, but it's not like super, super flashy, but the taste, that aftertaste has got something to it, man. It really is. Yeah. I can see why. It stays he, in your mouth after you smoke it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so I'm interested. I'm interested to, to taste more of those SFE ones now to see if you know there's any chocolate hiding in those, because that the cake in this that's you know that's that's interesting. So yeah, I've never talked about plants that I haven't smoked as much as these. So every time we talk, I get more and more excited about it. <laughs> well, that could be good and bad. You know, you never know. You get your, you know, Oh no, it's all good. It's all good. But it should, it should, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think, uh, 
Yeah, I think this is some fire stuff. I think people would enjoy smoking this with that chocolate stuff. That's nice. There, there seems to be a good a good amount of variety in the in the pack. You know, like it's not it's not it's like consistent, and but it's not overly so. Like I don't I. I Half the time when people, I look at it this way, when people are buying packs of seeds, when they're talking about home growing and kind of on, on the level that we're doing it, especially for the hobbyists, they're going to pop a couple seeds, probably flower them all the way out, you know, and then they're going to go through their pack and pack a tent and they'll come back and visit here and there. And, and, and half the time, these people want a little bit of variety. You know, it's a lot more fun for them to get a little bit more fun and unique flavors and, and not every single plant be the same. I mean, there's definitely that consistency there that, that can be enjoyable, but I like a little bit of variety, especially if, if you're growing out like a whole tent in one round. Like, I'm going to put like 12, I'm going to put down nine of these ice cream cakes, kind of, and if they're all exactly the same, you know. All right fucking now i got and, and you know because you're just growing like you know a couple pounds for yourself so it's not but like i love a shit the fact that the breeder is surprised at finding something in there that's what's intriguing about this you know the guy that put it together is like wow this is unique you know i, I i'm excited about that that's cool it's the, yeah it's those surprises i think those surprises are fun man i think that's cool where you're like oh i was going for something like this and didn't get that at all but i got this it actually is kind of really neat you know what i mean yep. in its own right like i didn't even consider you know what i mean you know on that side that's and that might be the only not, one like it yeah exactly it's not to say that, that there might be a bunch of others that are just you know the other way you know so yeah but that is cool i, I i'm stoked he gave me some because that's that was worthy of the you know of the of the did, you know. did you get to get familiar with the plant before it was harvested like this specific pheno did you get to like know it what did it have a specific no i saw it, i saw it once early on before it went into flower and then i hadn't seen it again and i hadn't talked to him again about it either and then uh the other day um i got a text that says hey i got a couple of buds so um let's link up. You know what I mean? I said, cool. I'd love, to, I'd love to taste some. I just harvested some myself, you know? So, um, yeah, that's what I got. So, so next episode, you get to, you get to cock tease us by smoking some of it and for, like other than this stuff, but some of the stuff that you grew in front of us. Yes. 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 I'll have some of the, some of my ice cream cake hand are dry so that I can actually nice taste that, you know, it'll be pretty early in the cure then too. So we'll be able to, yeah, like... it's almost dry now. So they're, they're going to, I mean, I could trim it up and put it in a jar if I really wanted to right now, you know, when I have some time. So I'll do that the next day or so. And I'll give it a couple days, but I don't mind smoking stuff early. I like smoking it, you know, if it's dry, it's ready. You know, I hang it right. and I let it hang for a long while. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that the dry is a lot of the cure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to put it in a jar and do that. And it's going to change. But if I dried it right, it should be fucking delicious when I when I pull it off the stick. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm good with that, you know? How often do you find plants that are absolutely horrendous unless you give them a nice long time? I've got a couple that are like, yeah, you if you but if you give it that that fucking that's that, you know, yeah, that's three, four months. It's yep. just like, fuck, what the yep. hell? And where did that come from? No, you're and right. Yeah. It's, dude, there's some plants that hold on to lots of chlorophyll, you know, and other stuff. And it's just like you can't you got to get rid of a lot of that. You got to let those those things break down and, and kind of, you know settle a little bit you know and then there's other ones that are like dude if you don't smoke me now i'm gonna i'm gonna lose everything that i have in in two months and you're gonna wish you smoked me right when i had me you know what i mean so it's like you gotta be able to identify which one is which you know and i'm always what, what? go ahead i just smoke them all fast yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like, it really <laughs> depends on how empty your jars are you know what i mean it's like <laughs> like do you have anything you're enjoying to smoke today because if you don't, you're probably going to smoke the ganja that you're, you're hanging <laughs> a little early. Yep. <laughs> white Widow, White Widow, like, uh, and then all the White Widow hybrids, they all, you they're better when you're fresh. And the yep. same thing with, like, uh, some of the green, a, a lot of the greenhouse stuff, I've noticed, it's like, it's always better fresh. Um, it, some of the other stuff that's, from Shanti Baba, that's separate is is a little bit different, but uh, 
what I've noticed is a lot of the greenhouse stuff, separate of the the, the super silver haze, is better when you you cure it. But uh, yeah, like strawberry haze is always better when you uh, grow it fresh and then just immediately smoke it. And the same thing with um, the great white shark and with with any widow crosses. And um, yeah, it, it, it's funny how that is. But then there's other stuff like I was doing a, a haze cross that I was uh, um oh my gosh what was it it was a uh, uh, shit it was a cat piss haze that I was developing um it, shit it was what was that I don't remember Mako haze from um the uh, uh, dam green and uh, and then uh which was kiwi seeds, and then it was a cross with Hawaiian snow from the greenhouse. And so I took these two, uh, basically, uh, I brought back some of these seeds, and like, I basically crossed these two lines of different hazes uh, and basically made uh, an F8 uh, of these over the years, and I just kept banging and banging and banging them. And it was a lot different because when you grew that, the fresh bud wasn't any good at all. Like it was kind of like mid. It's just kind of. But when you let it like kind of cure out, it would have these like peach and like woody flavors just come out, and it would just be so beautiful. Like always, like. But like he was saying, you you want to fucking smoke it because you like it, it. It's a matter of do I need weed right now? So. <laughs> You just fucking end up smoking them as all of it. And then when you have like a little bit of nugs left that you just leave with like, because I, what I do is I'll leave nugs with my seeds. So I can remember, oh, this is the reference of what this is like. So then I can like try it again and say, okay, I want to do this with this. Um, but it, it's like, it's always so much better <laughs> with, with those old, like those old hazes. It's just, it just gets better and better as like, especially at six months. Six months is right around where it's perfect. Then after about a year, it degrades. Two years, it goes completely down. The uh, PAMS, when, like, the PAM 15, it's got all this crazy, like, skunky funk candies and berries and all kinds of fun stuff, like, right on, the, right off the bat. It's, like, deliciously, you know, like, bright and kind of... It's got some funky must in there because that's what it is. But it, it's got this really nice sparkling brightness to it. It's really delicious. You get like like co like great great cough syrup type tones and like like really cool tones come out of it. But if you let it sit for a couple months and it's jarred up and you're letting it sit and it's curing on you know in the dark and I have this nice little situation you know little little place where I get everything. It's like a wine cellar type situation. You can cure stuff in. Um, but if it's in the dark and it sits there for a few months, man, it turns into cheese, you know, and it, it's like all those, all those berries and stuff kind of goes away and you get this like incense and cheese and it's like a sharp, like parmesan -y type cheese or a, or a bad cheddar cheese or something like that, you know, like a funky one gone wrong, you know what I mean? Like it's got this cheesy tone to it. And, the, you know, the same thing with Pam One. She's very berry and blueberry and skunky and funky and beautiful up front. But you let it sit, and then it becomes this really musty, cool, great cheese. You know what I mean? And people go ape shit for the cheese. And sometimes you show them the cheese, and they're like, oh, my God, I love you have cheese. You know, and it's like cheese. And it's like, I don't like that when it gets to that cheesy point. You know what I mean? But like people love some of that some of that cheese that comes out of there, and if you're waiting, you wait for it, you get this you get this cheese. But like it's weird how it does it does change. They settle in, you know. It's a great it's a great thing, you know. It's that's the art, man. That's that's the art. I fucking love it when they ch when it changes. <laughs> I like I I love tasting it at every <laughs> single point, no matter what. Like I'll go out and I, like every day I'll go grab a little salad. <laughs> a little salad and I'll get a little mix of everything and I'll try it out. You know, like you got to do it and you got to do it every single day and you got to see it, what happens. And, and so as a chef, like I, I train my palate every day for years on end and it's all good. It's all good. I train myself every day on years on end. Like it would drop my wife knocked out one of our cameras. 
um <laughs> years on end like going down a line and tasting like 150 things because a random food restaurant we had to taste all this shit every day it's like make sure it all tastes good so i i i, I love i i can i can tell when things like change just a little tiny bit and i fucking love it it's like a story happening i swear to god and and it's it's some plant some 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 plants really transition through like kind of like they'll go day by day like they'll go like when they get a little bit of that heavier moisture content when they're going <coughs> through a breathing phase they'll like they'll get really kind of chlorophyll and, and and danker and then they'll start drying a little bit and you'll get a little bit more cleanliness out of them and each time it it changes and develops a little bit more slightly and you have that flow that comes through it and then it's like comes clear like i have one that when you when you grab it like even the first plant when you pull it off and you put it in the jar it doesn't smell great you know it doesn't even have much of an aroma at all really it's not super fucking awesome but then you leave it and let it fester for a fucking while like good cheese and it's like it's lemony and i'm like unique and funky and like a like a like a weird lemon and it comes through really nicely but it's like it smells like crap at the start it like nothing it's just not great but as that time goes by but if you dry it too hard i think you can fuck it up pretty fast but it's it's a beautiful plant but it wouldn't be it's not one of those things that you you you'd open a bag of at a, at a store and go oh you know fucking look at that glorious goodness looking thing um but but it, it'll get you high and it tastes really nice which is which is what's important to me it kind of reminds me of something. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I just said fuck the looks. It's um, all about how it tastes. That's about it. Well, I was thinking about uh, London talking about being a chef, and it's kind of like, you know, some food, you have to eat it right when it's cooked, and some things are better, like stews and stuff like yep. that as they sit, you know? Kind of reminded me of that when you were talking about being a chef. Totally. Hundred percent. Why is it so many flavors? Immaculate, like it, and it's cool. And people think that you like you lose flavor or things go away, and I just think they change. You know, they don't necessarily. If you do it right, they shouldn't go anywhere. They should just change a little bit, and they can be good or bad or favorable or not. But they, you know, I don't know. Yep. London, I have a question for you. Shoot. Why is it that so many people that grow weed worked in the food industry? <laughs> I think we're, is... we're we're experiential people. We really <laughs> like we're always we're about consumption. We're about uh, consumption and and in all of its glory and all of its greatness, right? From the finer things in life to food to to wine to whiskey to late nights and glorious <laughs> glorious marble tables and and weird coke <laughs> nights and and famous people that you shouldn't run into on a regular basis and you really wish you didn't you know, like, dude i have i have i have i i have served the rock potatoes and it was hell it was the worst fucking experience of my life no 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 shit no shitting on the rock he's a, probably a very fantastic person but he came to our restaurant at lunch at like two o'clock in the afternoon while we're setting up for dinner service in, 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 the, in the between periods and ordered like 10, 10 fucking baked potatoes for the fucking table. And it's like, they're like, dude, like it's lunch. We don't have baked fucking potatoes. I'm like, I'm like microwaving baked potatoes by the dozen in the fucking microwave. And they're like, it takes like 25 fucking 40 minutes. And they're like, well, why did it take so long? Well, it's fucking two o'clock in the afternoon. You ordered fucking a dozen baked potatoes. These and and we got we got special potatoes. They were fifty count, so they were like big. They're every single one of them was like boom, right? So like you throw that in the microwave, it's gonna take a fucking while. And there's me and there there's the microwave me and my, yeah. There's me and my sous chef like standing there, all the food out, waiting for these fucking potatoes to come through, and uh. <laughs> you know. And and then there's the owner going, well, I could teach you how to cook potatoes faster. I'm like, oh really, really? You can, oh you yeah, can, you could Always. do that fast. Okay, sure. You got another microwave, like you, like what do you you gonna look at it or something? That's what I used to tell people. You know, if you look at things, like like you really want to do them, like you're really enjoying it and you're really focused, 
it'll cook quicker. I swear <laughs> to God. So if sure. you do that when you're looking at your plants, I, I'm pretty sure that they'll grow weird. <laughs> like, just, that start... explains a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is it though? Like you were talking about getting jammed on our lunch rush. Why is it like at like 12 o'clock on the lunch rush? There's always some Karen that comes in and orders 20 fucking things, and everyone's name has to be individually ordered, and everything has to be done, expected, like, just their fucking thing, for that, 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 that. And you're sitting here making $8 an hour, and you're making about $100 of sandwiches. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that, that is hell. I never, I never really worked in those spaces. I always tried to go, like, really expensive high-end restaurants that had ridiculously priced menus um, just because I didn't want to deal with too much of that. And even then, you get a lot of specific, specificity. But, you know, people are, pe- people are shitty. It's not like in Europe. We can't, like, in Europe, if you go to the menu, and if you go to an Italian restaurant and sit in there, and go like, hey, can I get my avocado toast with the yeah. avocado on the side? And da, 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 da. they'll look at you and say, fuck off. Like, they'll yeah. just tell you to leave. <laughs> like, just go away. Yeah. I don't want you to come here. Like, fuck yep. you. Like, but in, in, but the thing is, is in North America, the culture is different. And, and whether you like it or not, that's how it is. Um, so you can get frustrated by it and, and that you could beat yourself up all day for that because they're just horrendous human beings. They're 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 the the lowest low of the lower people that are rude to restaurant people. Like they're the worst human beings in the world, totally. and and there's a lot of them, guys. Just so everyone's aware. Oh yeah, I have no idea how many people there are that are just flat out rude to restaurant folk, and and yeah. So restaurant not too bright to do that to somebody dealing with your food either. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. hell no. Restaurant tours in Amsterdam don't. Don't put up with a damn fucking thing. They they will tell you get the fuck out. Like you go in and buy some weed, and then you're like sitting down and you want to go smoke. Most of the time they'll tell you get the hell out if you're not buying anything. And and they are very those are very strong women that are working there, <laughs> and I have nothing but respect for them because you know they they're just trying to make their living, and uh, it's yeah. It's a very different culture versus here where we think the customer is always right. There, the customer is always wrong. But the customer is always right and out of the case. It is what it is. <laughs> so. I've never worked in the food service, but I do all the cooking. At Liar. Time, so. No, no I swear to God. You're, you're, you're full of shit. Never. You know why? Because you grow food. Yes. No, so, so guess you're what? Right. Guess I what? I cook all of my own food. Yeah, I cook for the family. I'm the I'm the chef at the house. Like my wife is the chef. I do all the cooking. You know what I mean? So I make fucking sushi from the vegetables in the garden by hand and shit. You know what I mean? And homemade that you know chicken noodle soup and shit like that. You know, so I definitely uh I know how how it is in the kitchen getting the turps, but. I always go to restaurants and I'm always like, oh, dog, don't do that. Don't do that. You're pissing off the people at the restaurant. Please don't ask that way. Please don't do this. You're going to, you're going to get sick. Just stop. You know, is this so your, like, is this you your know? wife? Is this your Just wife be cool speaking? to anybody. It's like, don't talk to the box like that. Like, you know, these people, you know, just be really nice to people, you know, be really nice to them. You know, <laughs> so I, always, I, I like making my own food. It's a good thing. I started you're going to need to in Canada really quick here. There's going to be such a food collapse in the restaurant industry. It's going to be just. Yeah. Crazy. I was going to yeah, say dude. during that whole friggin' virus situation in the world, you know what I mean? Like I, uh, we, you know, I had to learn how to cook a lot of things that I really enjoyed that I, that I wasn't getting, you know what I mean? Uh, from here. Like I make, I make some of the best friggin' hot wings on planet earth these days. You know what I mean? Some of the coolest hand. I learned so many cool like hamburger techniques and stuff. So when know? I come into your house, you're going to make me hot wings. Is that what you're Dude, saying? I will blow your mind with some friggin' hot wings. They're, they're straight up from Buffalo, like the anchor, like the origin, like where they came from. And I've been to the anchor bar in Buffalo where they supposedly were spawned or whatever. And like, so I've tasted like, I've tasted like the, the bar, you know what I mean? And then I learned <laughs> the recipes and stuff. So I know how it stacks up, bro. I can make some hot wings, man. That's no doubt about that. It's one of my specialties. But, do you make the hot sauce yourself too? 
Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll just cheat and use Frank's, you know, because <laughs> you can put that shit on anything. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I got a few habanero plants I'm going to try and do this year. Do you have any, like, does anybody have any interesting plants since we're in the spring and we're all gardeners anyways? Is there something fun that you have that you're going to be throwing down? What you got, Coastal? Talk to me. So... I am desperately trying to find daikon radish, but not on Amazon.com because I'm not trying to support them, on that. especially with their Chinese source seeds. So I'd rather do someone in the U.S. Uh, and then I'm going to try to do carrots. And then I have a whole shitload of, uh, I got them right here, uh, San Martano's. And uh, like heirloom San Marzano's and uh, different types of beans and all that. So um, I'm just hoping my dog won't try to run over um, my patch. My I have a chocolate lab. You can see her running back and forth in the videos sometime. Uh, it, basically, she runs over every plant that's tall. She intentionally does it. So... That's what I'm going to be trying to run this year. And, uh, and then I'm going to try to do some potatoes and other stuff in raised beds and in and, and, and pots. But uh, that that's my hopes for the year. But, yeah, last the last time we had the silliest, like, harvest, my wife did uh, corn. And uh, she had a corn nugget that was about the size of a golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> It was the cutest thing. I think <laughs> it's, it's on. It's on. If you look at Mrs. Coastal Grown, it's on oh, gee, yeah. uh, it's on her Instagram. It's the that's funniest, the tiniest piece of corn that's ever existed on planet Earth. Oh, but uh, yeah, but yeah, that, that those are the plans for this next year right now. That's cool. What about you, Corey? What do you got? Anything? Uh, Any funny? Well, I was going to say about the about the uh, daikon radishes. If you I've gotten them free from Peter. From yeah, call Peter, bro. I yeah, was going to say, if you can email too, Peter, he's got daikon. Go to daga.com yep. and send him a message and be like, I need that. He's, he's drowning in them. Everybody, okay. everybody, yeah. let's just just take turn. Peter. Hey, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching the Peter. game if it's still on. I don't even know. Yeah, my, he, my always puts, he always puts the shows on it. Peter. 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 If you're there, Peter. Peter, if you're there, <laughs> just, if you're there, Peter, we need daikon. We need daikon, daikon radish seeds sent to Coastal <laughs> Grown OGA. Send that the signal for daikons. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, get it done. Uh, <laughs> he's there. Great. He's going to pop up in like 30 seconds. He's going to be like, yeah, hey, sure. guys. Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, so what else? So got? I, got, I have, uh, I, you know, I just a couple of foolish things. I, I ran some, uh, planted some of the uh, shaman tobacco that i got from Peter. uh Man. not sure but thought it was kind of cool uh i've got uh, i've got your radishes in my four by four bed that's kind of fun you know nice. I'm running those right with my cannabis so yeah nice check that yeah, you out i get some daikons in there those are some cool like it's like a weird open pollination of like three or four different awesome radishes that are in there so like in the radical yeah, yep. the radical radishes. Yeah, yep. so you get some funky, cool stuff in there. You know what I mean? So there, yep. there's some cool radishes in there, but they don't all look round. You know what I mean? So sure. <laughs> so that's cool. I, I, yeah. So I, I got some of those in there, and uh, I've got uh, I've got some Berkeley tie dye tomatoes that I'm going to try this year. They look kind of cool. I don't know. London had some neat looking tomato he was showing, but it, it looked kind of cool. It looked different. Figured oh, I'd yeah. try that. Um, nothing. Crazy. I've got a uh, uh, a, a purple uh, uh, basil that I'm trying something different, but nothing nothing too out of the oh, box. Cool I think that the, the shaman tobacco is a little different for me, you know. Yeah, yeah you got to be careful with that, bro. That that you know that's. Oh, I'm definitely not going to ingest it. I I, <laughs> I I I just quit smoking cigarettes like a couple years ago, and I have yeah, no. It, I, I think it was getting singing. <laughs> Probably get me sick. Yeah. What's so gamer. special about this tobacco? Like, what's it? I think the it's got high level. nicotine. It's, high, high it's, nicotine. It's got crazy levels of stuff. It's, it's like, it 
it's like hallucinating tobacco or something, man. I don't know, man. It's it's, it's intense stuff, you know. Sounds like sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> it can, I it can literally Do kill you. Research. I don't advise any of that. Well, yeah, but but, you, but okay. So there's 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 some really good applications for using tobacco in like plant ferments for your for yep. preventative methods. You Insects. know what else is really fucking awesome about yeah. tobacco? And I have a bunch of tobacco plants. Yeah. You can use just a moment. Soap, soak that crap in water and make some some insecticides, man. Spray stuff, <laughs> boundaries. Things don't like that, you know. They're really sticky. They're like crazy sticky ass plants, and they, like you walk by them and they they rub on. This is jasmine tobacco. It's like a hybrid kind of. So it's a little bit different. It's really pretty. It's got this beautiful. Is that, is that how they all grow, or is that just particular to that one variety? Uh, it's that one. Yeah, okay. This is a little bit because I was going to say it's... the one I have is really larfy, like it, it's... yeah, big fatter leaves in some cases, you know, some like like more at the bottom. Ones. There you go. Yeah, yeah there you go. It didn't have that stretch, but maybe yeah. it will. I don't know. That that's neat. So it, but it catches everything. So any bug that lands on it, fucking dies. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, it's just like done. Except for it can land on the flowers, but about other than that, it's got a really sticky. Like you walk by it, and it leaves you with, with a text. It like it, and it'll grab you when you walk by it, which is kind of cool. cool. Plants are like, red. Yeah, because it it's got like it's really really soft and fuzzy, and it, it it's, it's kind of cool. Which shout out you can actually get. It's in one of the packs from Cunning Folk. You can get this one, which is oh, kind of yeah. cool. Oh, I got okay. a bunch of them, but they're they're really cool pest things because they're like now i don't buy sticky traps because <laughs> bugs oh it's an indicator I, yeah right like you could you sure. get like i saw a good fungus net come out the other day and it was all up in here and it, it was pretty pretty epic it was neat i've got so i've got them placed throughout the yard um and in strategic spots so i can kind of see what happens and i go check them every once in a while and see where they go and if you keep them cut they keep bouncing back and and re do they flower or how do they go to seed yeah, yeah flower. they flower out. So yeah. there's these beautiful little these white little flowers. Tubular little things. Okay. All right. I didn't even see that. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Here, I think I can bring this up. Yeah, tobacco is one of those things. I don't I don't have tons I don't have tons of experience growing tobacco. I never I never had the had the itch to, to plant tobacco. Oh but yeah. I've seen it in lots of places and it's really cool. It's I've seen a lot of different types, a lot of different looks to it, you know. A lot of different types. That I kind of planted it because I've never seen it. I wanted to try it just to look at it. Can, can you see the fuzziness on the leaf? Can you yeah, see? Like, can, my, you can almost see the quality of it, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It, I knock it over like three fucking times a day because it's sticks <laughs> in my jean when I walk by it. It's like, and I got it in a one fucking gallon pot. But like, mm -hmm. they, they seem to really choose their this what this variety does seem to choose its its flower by its pot size so yeah. it's the other ones seem to be going and getting quite a bit larger um like i have one in a pot right over there that's like in a bed and it's just keeps stacking and getting wider and wider which is pretty cool and, it, and that's kind of neat. it's been fun my wife wanted to dig into some new and unique plants and so that's been kind of an area that we've been digging into one that you guys might think is neat is this. You like you like celery? Oh yeah, love celery. Man. If, the, if the lighting's gonna come, so you got some pink here. celery. Yeah, the red. I got the red celery. Dude, the Chinese red or the Chinese pink or whatever. That stuff's fire, man. That's great. Isn't it good? Like, look yeah, at that. it's going pretty nice. Too. I didn't get a get you this year. I, I've grown that in the past, and I just uh, I just saw. Um, I, like an envelope from Baker Creek, and they had the picture of that on the back, and I was like, "Oh, god damn it!" We we got to do a trade. I got thread, some. You know? I got some. I can send you. The, you get like a billion in a pack. I got a pack. Yeah, they're cool. What kind of flavor is it? Those are cool. Uh, yeah, a lot, like lot those. sharper, a lot sharper. Uh, of, okay, uh, of a flavor yeah. than than your traditional celery. So more of a spice really or something. Have you have you tried salad Barnett? Have you tried growing salad Barnett? That's kind of a weird one. No, I have not. That one, I have not. That one's no salad Barnett. I don't know much about that at all. It's like it's like a weird new salad that I've been trying. Out. Look at the leaf structure on it. Oh, it's like a thicker set, like a thicker succulent type salad, or is yeah. It 
yeah, it's like a is it's, it's like interesting. A mal- it's like, yeah, it's like a Malabar spinach or a, yeah, kind of. Yeah, one of the, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, That's it's cool. uh, it's in this it's in the Malabar spinach family. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's got that thicker leaf, and it grows more spindly and viney, and you kind of eat the individual leaflets, you know. And those are those are cool, super nutritious, probably. Really good flavor too. Like they're not like too sharp. They got a bit of flavor, but not too much. I've been trying to find like a nice, like lettucey light light flavored lettuce or whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, kind of nice but easy to grow i get i get a lot of slugs and i have a ridiculous volume of isopods like (laughs) like i got so many isopods it's ridiculous but i'm okay with that yeah because that's just part of what it is like i also have mushroom i found a mushroom in my in my little compost corner that when i cleaned out the corner of my greenhouse today that was like that big around I like I fucked it right up in the process, so I didn't take a picture because <laughs> I was like fucking digging around, right? But, like like that big around and like nice big way, almost like the one. So I was like, awesome! I found some good. Like I put I put a layer of wood down underneath the section, and then then put the compost up, and was able to get a really good like white mold growing all, out throughout it. So it's like composting really nicely. So I'm getting to like a nice under layer to my to my base garden there because I just put that down in wood and then hay and then wood and then hay and then rotate through and it's pretty good i get like i get i get a lot of worm droppings it's kind of like i can go through and pick them up and move them into certain bins if i want to but yeah why yeah yeah what's the uh what's the eta on being able to get some worm juice by the way Oh, right on, man. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> not to, not to cut you off, but no, I'm working on, I'm working on some of that. I'm figuring out, you know, what I can ship and what I can't ship. So I'm going to, I'm going to go Monday. I'm going to talk to my people. That was my uh, most hit good. post reposter and, story this week was that. It was your yeah, and I'll juice. figure out like, you know, what they're going to do or what I got to do. Cause I know you can, I just don't, you know, I just don't like going through the hassle of stuff like that. And like answering a bunch of freaking questions and checking that box. Like I don't, I just don't want to check the box. You know what I mean? Like Commitment. I, don't, I don't want the lithium batteries, liquids, funky stuff box. I don't want to check that box. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm going to have to check that box if I send the liquid. So. I gotta figure out what that means exactly, you know. So I don't really know. Um, cool. But yeah, I'm gonna be setting up the farmers markets and stuff around here, and I'm gonna be bringing it around with me. I'm doing lots of cool tests with it too, because I'm I'm trying to figure out how long I can actually make it go. Because I can I can seal that bottle up. I can aerate it, can you know feed it a little of my FAA, and then I can bottle it, and it can stay good for a couple weeks now. I've gotten bottles that that don't smell funky and are beautiful and are usable and all that stuff so then i started putting them in my fridge and i'm waiting to open a couple that are a couple weeks old now uh that have been sitting in the fridge instead and under a cold and i'm gonna see what they look like and i'm gonna i'm gonna look at those under the microscope a little bit and then i'm gonna i'm gonna fiddle around a little bit with that and figure out if i should store them in the fridge or i shouldn't and you know what the deal is with all that so i'm working on i'm working on all those little details but right now i know that the shit works i've just never tried to bottle it before and like share it with anybody and if i do I don't want it to stink. you know what i mean yep. and i want it to work the way that it's supposed to work so i've been working on that and it's working so i'm yeah i'm getting close i'm figuring it all out it's you know? exciting i saw that i wanted yeah. to i thought about it when you said you know Worms. And, yeah. yeah. People of my, I work for all kinds of different people doing orchard stuff and we do trees and all kinds of stuff. And the people always ask me all the time, like, I want some of your funny little things that you use. Cause I use all kinds of funny little teas and brews and funny little, you know, extracts and this thing and that thing. And I put stuff together all the time and, and their trees kick ass. You know what I mean? They're like, I want to buy something, you know, and magic like, okay, potions. Well, so I started putting some stuff together and I'm like, well, this I can guarantee is going to you know do what I, what it does, you know? So What's up, Coastal? Okay. I'm just dying because it's like, London, you have isopods in your grow tents. And I don't even understand how my wife would even tolerate that. In the house. <laughs> I don't, I don't, have I, I would in love to have tent. living soil. Yeah. Well, actually, no, there's isopods in my grow tent. There's definitely isopods. In my grow tent. Definitely. And then, and then, and then. It, like Tyler is talking about, like keeping uh, the like the the teas in, in the refrigerator, and I'm just like, 
<laughs> I'm lucky to be able to have like a closet to put a tea in, and I still get told I have to stop. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I'm grateful she lets me like make a bio reactor somewhere but like yeah it's just fucking hilarious i'm just sitting here just yeah. dying like wow we like really have to have some tolerant women to like put up this shit i brew like a hundred liter i brew 200 liters of of tea a week during certain periods of time it's like hey there's always shit brewing here <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, yeah. it ain't fun, I always though. get yelled at for having plants on the window seal in the kitchen. Like that's like the shadier window seal that's bright that I can like put little cuttings and start like basil things. I'll make like ten basil cuttings and put them up there. Or cut half of my onion and leave the root chunk up there and like stuff like that that I'll plant later. You know, weird stuff like the potato that starts growing. I'll set it in the window seal. Like she hates that. I always get in trouble. She's always threatening to throw out my window sill plants, you know. So I'm always like, I'll clean it up. I promise, it's out of here. But <laughs> we got to get a tour of this one. of this because we because <laughs> now I'm like now I imagine you putting like a piece of wood so the window sill's extended, and then you have a heavier plant on one side so that you have more. You can fit more plants there. And he scoops them all up to rescue them so his yeah. wife doesn't throw them like, away. Oh, <laughs> like leaning on each other with like, like it's like your wife's like it's a strategic move to di wash dishes. Like if you make the wrong move, you're gonna kill fifteen of Mr. Tree's favorite basil products. Exactly. Like, it's exactly. like like and then she does it, she's like, Fuck you, I did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it gets out of hand sometimes. I can't help it, man. I'm growing some some yellow mountain watermelon again. It's one of my favorite watermelons of all time. It's really friggin' amazing. So if you guys like growing watermelon or you like watermelon, grow the yellow ones. You know what I mean? The ones with the yellow insides. Um, whatever variety you can find. But I'm growing growing some mountain yellow watermelon. I'm growing some like super black carrots, like beyond black carrots that are like better for juicing for this crazy black juice as opposed to like eating. They stain your teeth really bad because they're that juicy and, and black. Um, so I'm excited to see those. I'm, I'm interested for, I forget the name of them. I'll, uh, if anybody's interested or whatever, I can you hit me up. I'll, I'll send you the picture of the name or whatever, but I'm growing those this year and I'm kind of stoked about it. among all my other carrots. Cause I grow lots of carrots. I grow all kinds of colored carrots and funky carrots. I like carrots. So I grow carrots. Um, I'm growing those. Those are cool. I'm growing some accordion um, uh, orange tomatoes, which are cool. So they get really freaking big and they're like all ribbly and accordion like and they look like an accordion coming up, you know, and they get like, you know, pretty good size. Like, you know, I like yours over there. Like, you know, I had a faciated one. one last week that was like. Like, yeah, you know, they get all like weird looking. That yeah. was cool. Yeah, they're like a they're a weird one that, that does that in like a nice Michelin style like stackage. You know, it's kind of cool. It's it's kind of it's very it's very interesting. I'm growing uh, lots of lot more like uh, flower corn this year. I'm growing popping corn. I'm growing a little patch of sweet corn, uh, multicolored sweet corn, and some different colored popping corns because I always do those. I, I love having popping corn. It's one of my favorite things to grow in, in the world. Um, little cobs of popping corn is the best um but i'm growing a lot more flower corn so like mohawk red and uh some magic mana and some um some purple funky stuff that uh i forget who sent some back i'm drawing a blank on the name i'm high but some cool cat sent me some cool corns i'm growing some of his purple ones um are you gonna be selling that so, yeah, I don't know how that's, I don't, I've never really grown a big plot of just flower corn in the, in planning to grind it up for cornmeal. You know what I mean? Like I'm planning to pretty much just grind it all up or most of it up for cornmeal. Oh, I meant seeds. Are you going to be selling oh, seeds? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I have those now. I can, yeah, anybody wants corn, funky corn seeds, some flower corn seeds, some popping corn seeds, funky stuff like that. I haven't got it, haven't got it all doggo stocked up, you know, as of recently on some of those. Um, which I will, but if anybody wants any of that weird stuff, hit me up. I'll send you a vegetable list of all kinds of funky stuff that I have. Um, I, I want that list. 
on just, stack. You yeah, can, I got you some can cool just do that and... right after the episode. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, email me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Email me. Look that motherfucker yeah, up. I'm growing some weird stuff like that for like. I'm gonna grind corn this year. I'm excited about grinding some some funky colored cornmeal and making some cornbread. And... I will come and make you some of the most badass fucking tacos, man. <laughs> yeah. I will make you like Michelin star <laughs> level food. If, if, yeah, if you corn, pay for the flight and tortillas. put me up and put me up. I will make the best tortillas and tacos you've ever had. Oh, in your life. dude, I'm down with that stuff, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's cool. I'm good with that stuff. That's but yeah, I'm gonna do that this year. So. Um, among all the other funky stuff, because I got all kinds of stuff, squashes and pumpkins, growing lots of pumpkins. Oh, I'm growing I'm growing a cool pumpkin, a uh, huskless seed pumpkin. That's The seed doesn't have a husk on it for eating the seed a little better, you know? So I'm growing Ooh, seed, which is like cool. 90% Just, of pumpkin seed or squash seeds suck. Yeah, they exactly. really don't. No, they're not great. Yeah, you know? so I'm I'm planning on I'm I'm planning on getting like those huskless ones so that you just eat this awesome meaty seed in the middle. It's just full of these meaty. Are seeds. they like really bred for seeds? So they like got a really thin rind. Yes. And they're like really full of seed. Okay. Yeah, cool. they're they're a cool. typical pumpkin that is grown for seed. I don't know how thin the actual cavity is and stuff like that, but I'm gonna select out of there and I'm gonna play around with some of those and I'm gonna take the take the seed from the ones that are the best and have the, the those types of characteristics, you know, uh, you the most seeds in the cavity, when you cut them open. Uh, good, you know, good strength, good shape, all those funny things I'll look at and I'll start taking those seeds and I'll start using those seeds uh, for the future. But I'm growing that for the first time. I've never grown a huskless, you know, pumpkin for a pumpkin seed uh, variety before. And that's something that I'm growing. New. I grow lots of pumpkins. I'm growing big giant ones and little ones, but I never grown that type before. So, it's new for me um, this year, which is cool. I like pumpkins. Me too. Man. I, I do okay with squash, they, but they just, they, I have such a small space that it's always about like, how many plants can I fit in a three by three square spot? Like, and like how, yeah. how many? Cause I could, I could fit a lot at this point, depending yeah. on what they are. Um, but pumpkins and squash don't do really good, but I am trying to do this. This melon this year, which is kind of a dolce de la table. Oh, cool table. I don't know why it's <laughs> half French and half English. I don't know the table. Why is it dolce de la table? It's like, hey, cool. I'm I'm half French, but it's really like it's a funky old school variety. Looks like that's a cantaloupe. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm growing lots of weird melons this year too. I don't, I don't have that one, but yeah, I got, I like melons too. That's cool. That's nice. I have a question for you, Mister Trees, about watermelons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being a kid eating watermelon. Had seeds in it. Delicious, tons of flavor. Now I get these small watermelons with no seeds, and they yeah. taste like nothing. Yeah. Is that because they bred them for seedless and not flavor, or is it because they're growing them? different and they're lousy like what are we dealing with so it's a it's a combination of both of those things you know mostly <laughs> when you took the seed away that's the most important thing was it to be a seedless watermelon that's edible you know don't care I mean? about after, how it tastes after after that that's you know what I mean? edible. somebody worked on it but as soon as that was like, awful like, oh, there it is you know what i mean that was like, awful you know, that's it because it's like it's a seedless watermelon so how are you going to propagate it so that plant in itself you know what i mean however they're you know however they're getting that puppy to do its thing it's harder to do so it's like you're you know you got it locked down that's how you're gonna do it you know what i mean so um awesome. that's got something to do with it and then yeah they have to pick them a little earlier because you pick something really ripe and you know how you, you sometimes you can flick a watermelon and sometimes you know you can get those things to pop open you, you get it a little bit dinged a little bit and you can like flick it and it will like crack open you know what i mean really easy when they're really ripe um there's like all these cool videos you can actually check out like um, just Google it and it like, like, um, like, uh, nailing a watermelon open. They'll like take a nail and they'll just like hammer a little nail or they'll take a knife and just put one little dot and they'll just hit it. And the whole watermelon will crack perfectly in half. You know what I mean? When it's perfectly ripe. So they pick them a little earlier. So it's harder for, you know, so you're not getting that, that really rich killer meat you know what i mean and they're doing them on a bigger scale than they were back in the day because you know there were there were less less of us around and stuff you know so um mostly that seedless thing as soon as you start taking the seeds out of things when that you take the thorns the thorns away from stuff like there's a thornless mexican lime you know 
and like the real Mexican lime, the key lime has all these nasty thorns that'll tear up your arm. And it's like horrible. It's like a really tough, nasty plant. So they were like, okay, let's take the thorns away. So they made, they made one that didn't have the thorns, but then sometimes that one doesn't produce as well as the original one. You know, it's a little shyer to get barren. And sometimes in certain situations, it doesn't bear at all. Um, then there are other, other ones that do okay, but it like has this more emotional, less, less, frequent bearing characteristic that you kind of lost some of the magic uh compared to you know the old thorn variety because the old thorn variety will have freaking limes on it all the time 24 7 you know seven days a week some were ripe some weren't ripe some were dropping off and like you lost that when you lost the thorns so as soon as you start taking those things away yeah you're losing you're losing something you know else with it genes are locked together you know but yeah those seedless watermelons those are crap dude don't buy those man that's about all we see ever yeah, i mean we don't gotta, you gotta grow some you just get any pack man any any you can buy the grow the little ones you know just i don't get know an old-fashioned one with seeds in it man those are the bomb dude yeah and they're the most nutritious you're supposed to eat some of those seeds you know and chew them up and you know get definitely that yeah it's like grapes another thing like the seedless grapes. Same exact thing. Yes. You've yep. lost you this whole it. other thing, right? And yep. that's what you nailed it. And yep. you think about wine and they say, why is wine good for you? You know what I mean? This red wine is good for you because those grapes actually were, have seeds. And those wine grapes have seeds in them. And they're crushing those grapes and they're getting those. I forget what the chemicals are, but there's these certain chemicals that are really good for heart health and anti-cancer and all kinds of other things that are contained in the grape seed. And so like, you know, that red wine is is really magical more so because of the seeds in there you know what i mean that were crushed and, and all that stuff and those enzymes and stuff from that in addition to all you know those other arid aspects so like the ones that don't have the seeds are actually a little less nutritious than what they could be instead of you chewing up that seed and swallowing that seed and getting those those extra properties you know so taking shit away has its consequences that's for sure so Go for it, Coastal. Jump in there, man. Jump in, man. You don't need to Agreed 100%. <laughs> um, actually, I've seen with the inbreeding with cannabis uh, that, like, it really becomes a huge fucking problem. And I've also seen it with animals and everything else. So I'll go from cannabis and then I'll bring it back down to the other stuff if I can remember to. Uh, basically, uh, with cannabis, it, it really becomes a huge problem fucking problem and uh you you just you can't try to pull at one thing and not expect it to push at the other and it's the same thing with the inbreeding with uh all animals and and vegetables like if if you want good tomatoes you want to get heirloom tomatoes if you want to get like good pork you're going to have to get heirloom pork and typically it's going to have to be like a dark pig like all the lighter pigs the white pigs and the brown pigs are basically bred for uh production Mass production and that's why they don't taste as as good and and it's the same thing with with the chickens too and so if, if you go to the grocery store and you're buying like a whole chicken and then you happen to see these little black tips at the end of the uh, uh, of the wings, it's probably a good assumption that that chicken is probably better than some of the other ones there. Um, it, because like like Wegmans, for example, will do large scale production, but they'll use both the black. White. black and white chickens so you could get a it's a mishmash of what you can get so you gotta like kind of suss through it like I, I, I i'm always just looking 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 through whatever i'm getting uh to get the best one but uh it it, it it's been this thing in in the industry um and, and all the agricultural industry over the last hundred years is, is to take um what was good and then say, no, that's not good enough because it's not producing enough. And then saying, we're going to try to push it. Like, it, 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 it reminds me of, go ahead. It's follow the money. 
Yes. At the end of the day, right? Bottom line. Follow the money. Yep. And, and, and that's why you saw Big Bud in the 1990s become, like, such a huge thing. And it was, like, the shittiest weed ever. I mean, it was just covered in fucking uh, leaves and stuff. And, like, yeah, it created large buds. But, I mean, Chem D freaking makes large buds, too. And, I mean, speaking on that, that stuff doesn't even taste good when you smoke it. I mean, I, I, I really feel bad for anyone who smokes Chem D because it tastes so fucking bad. I mean, it's good for breeding, but... Um, for all those big bud plants, they just, they're terrible. I, and, uh, like, you know, they have their place. There is a place and people need to make a living, but I don't really care for it for my personal self. And so that's where I stand on it. <clears throat> I agree with you. I think they, it's, it's, it's just in all industries that you know if, if you get greedy things lack quality i guess that's what it boils down to yeah i but i'll, I'll say this i don't think people set out to go i'm gonna make a shittier food you know like i don't think ever, that's <laughs> ever anybody's plan no but i think when they say i'm gonna make more money it becomes shitty priority in place right and and that's but there's also people that have the opposite priority <laughs> right like I, I like I I hear what you're saying, coastal growing about a variety of colored of chicken, but it's also a breed of colored of chicken. Like I've I've like sourced chicken breeds like from all over the world to find like you know from Asian black skin ones to the very high end ones with the weird feet and all sorts of weird shit like that. And and, That's and the awesome. color of the color of the feathers <laughs> I don't think has too much to do with it, but the breed of the chicken. And the uniqueness that it is, is is what's critical and critical important. And that's the thing is that we have bred, they've bred for mass production, right? Like it's like what fits that's, on the conveyor and puts through the most chickens quickly as possible. And they're easiest to sex. And I can pr get the production down by 10% by having chickens that show high, higher developed sexual organs so that they're easier to sex by my sexes. Because I think that's still done by hand. In most facilities, I'm not aware of anybody sorting of, of there being a machine that sorts them. Um, but there might be. That being said, fucking, they have lasers that shoot bugs off of plants nowadays. So who fucking knows? Uh, but, Probably DNA them. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly <laughs> my point. That's exactly my point. Is is like these heritage breeds are being wiped out because they want to do these like really, really like vanilla plant uh, or not plant uh vanilla uh like chickens it's the same thing with the cows uh because like angus beef it lack angus beef and then um like the uh the wagyu beef that usually has more flavor i honestly believe angus has the most flavor out of all of them and then uh yeah you see it with the black pigs from spain and portugal and uh in italy it's got a funny story the black the, the black angus so angus cattle is actually uh, like it's a european breed of cattle that's traditionally red and it actually doesn't have black on it and the funniest fucking thing about the north american certification for a black angus because when they when they brought over angus beef from europe into north america they bred they crossbred it with some of the traditional cattle that gave it a black color and now the certification for black Angus beef is you have to have a, like something like 90% of the cattle needs to be black. Well, traditional Angus beef cattle is red. So that sounds like a bullshit certification to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just is that the make carcass? Money. What? Is that the carcass or the, or the, the number of animals per uh, acre? What? what i didn't say anything about that oh the, it has to be 90 percent. 90 no the color of the cow the color of the cow uh -huh. needs to be a certain percentage black for it to be considered angus beef in north america whereas the traditional color of the skin of the had cow no was black actually whatsoever. red had no red okay. whatsoever so it's just when they took it and crossed it into north american breeds we created a misconception and then the black angus came out and then it took off across the world you could you could google that 
I'm pretty sure <laughs> you can go ahead and try. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm solid on that one. Um, but it's weird. Like Wagyu's an interesting cattle and beef altogether. Like it's and it's actually like depending on who you are, I think it's kind of gross. Um, there's just so much Stop. fat that there's more fat than there is meat, depending on the grade. Like if you have A5, um, it's 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 interesting. It's like I used to watch people. They come in and they buy a 12 or 13 ounce steak and vomit because it's so rich and it's something just crazy. And they eat like a 14 ounce. It's like a 14 ounce pad of fat. It's like eating a pound of butter, you know, like. Yep. And then, and then all these, and then they just they get meat sweats. They just start fucking sweating violently, <laughs> and then it's just like, oh, it was great. This this one guy used to come and eat two fucking fifty ounce aged ribeyes. It's like that's like meat equal to the size of my head, and like by the end of it, he was just like. <sighs> We didn't give him any of it for free. It was like a six hundred dollar fucking dinner just in the steak. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It's craziness. Wow. It's what people do for meat and what people do for what we do for these plants is just ridiculous. What I want to do is find out what's around me and what's like relatively good and how I how I can use that to make it better. Like it's it's it, we have the ability to also have a lot of plants that we can pull in from around us as well that are like from California, from people like Mr. Trees that are breeding and stuff like that, that, that we can, we can get a hold of that weren't accessible before. Like if you look at the traditional tomato, which came from South America, when we first like, <laughs> we brought it over from South America after we colonized it. And it was just like a shitty little fucking tiny, like not really great thing. And they bred it and cried and changed it and developed all these amazing heirloom varieties over generations in time that we have now and now there's like these big beautiful and you can just buy that at the grocery store it's like you get these seeds pretty easily like that's not too challenging to get really cool good heirloom quality seeds nowadays i don't i don't think anyways so i think it's like it's an interesting cult it's an interesting area it's great for the hobbyist it's not great for the person that shops at walmart and the unfortunate thing is a person that shops at Walmart, you know, probably is trying to work so hard that they can't really take the time to grab into the garden and plant something to subsidize a little bit of their costs. Because that's what it is, is you're printing money. It's, you're just going into your backyard, you're putting something down and it's taking what, what's there around you and you're, 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 you have to eat. <laughs> Might as well grow something, right? Even if it's just a pot or something like that, right? Dude, I was working in the yard today when I got home from work and I didn't eat anything because I was running behind all day. Like I started off behind. I was behind. It was like two hours behind. I was trying to play catch up all day, you know, and I was even behind here, but I was only a couple minutes behind and made my way back. You know what I mean? Caught I got up. back, got back on track, but that's beside the point. But I was behind all day, <laughs> all day. And I was out there working. When I got home, I went out in the, out in the farm and I was doing work and I had to put up a couple of fences and and protect a couple of beds that I had from the dogs and from the squirrels and all kinds of stuff that'll run through them. You know, right now I just got them set up. So I was, I was putting up some fences and working on the little pond area. And then I was like, man, I am starving. And I'm like looking around and I'm like, okay, I got a Moringa over there. So I walked over to the Moringa, started eating Moringa tree leaves. You know what I mean? Started eating some of those leaves. And I walked in over there. I got some tangerine, I ate tangerine. Got some mulberries, uh, got some mulberries in me, you know. Got uh, some mulberries going it's getting rough. That, <laughs> then I walked over and I got some purslanes. I just potted up all these nice little purslane plants. I was eating some of those grains for a minute. Then I dug up a carrot and I and I ate a carrot and I'm like, I brushed there off my There is hands, nothing better than a that water, smell. I went back to work. You know what I mean? Completely fed myself like right there, just walking around in the back. You know, didn't have to go anywhere and was like rocking and rolling. You know, I mean, great. Granted, it wasn't a big old nice steak or some chicken wings or something. But yeah, hey, but you wouldn't have wanted to dude, move after dude, that. It was nobody, great, nobody you know? ate nothing. Nobody ate meat every fucking meal. That's what I up mean. Up until it was great, like last you know? twenty, thirty I felt years. So good. You know, great. I was like back to work. You know, so kept me on time. You know, time saving everything. And I love eating things when they're screaming at you. You know, I always say that like. You take you, you pick some or you pull that carrot right up out of the ground, you know, you clean it off and then you take a bite and it's like you, you listen really close and fucking things screaming. It's like, ah, you know, because it's alive still, you know, it's like still 
alive and like you know that tangerine just came off the tree you know what i mean it was just being pumped full of living good stuff you know what i mean it's hanging out and alive you know or you know that leaf was alive you know what i mean when i ate it you know what i mean it totally directly transferred what it had you know what i mean and it's it was wiggling in my mouth anything, trying you know? to not die it was pretty cool i think about that all the time he's screaming at me you hear that he's screaming you know it's great there's nothing better than that smell when you pull a carrot out of the soil, you know, like, and you just like, and it's just that really carrot, carrot, yep. carrot, carrot smell. Yep. Oh, I love that. I worked with a guy for a long time that only ate things that were given to him, um, ready to eat, like from mother earth. Right. So like if he had to do something to it or he had to kill it, he wouldn't eat it. So like a carrot, for example, you have to kill a carrot in order to like, you know, eat it unless you're going to replant it. Right. There's like technicalities, but like technically you're pulling it out you're killing that carrot and you're going to eat that root and that plant's going to die. Right. So that's not food. Right. To him. Right. That's what he said. And we always used to have arguments about stuff where a chicken, he's like, you can't just take a chicken and put it on a plate. You know, he's this really Rasta dude, like, you know, really cool dude. One of the smartest people yeah. I ever knew, but we always, we always talked about that. And every time I eat something and I'm, and I'm eating more off the plants and the trees, you know, the way that like they're giving them to you, like a fruit, you can pull it off a tree. You don't have to kill it. The tree's going to live another day. It's giving you something that's ready to eat and it's, and it's already ready to go package. You know what I mean? Like that's what he considered food, you know, actual food, you know, and stuff like that. So he didn't have to do anything to it and he didn't have to kill it that was that was his actual food you know that was what he was supposed to be eating and he was he was an older guy but he was a wild thinker man but some of those principles you know what i mean i think about sometimes you know what i mean when i'm eating stuff or i'm doing things you know what i mean and there's some you know there's some weird stuff to that you know but there ain't no way in hell that i'd give up carrots or i'd give up chicken wings or any of that <laughs> shit, you know what i mean so i mean it, you got to take that with a grain of salt but we used to argue all the time about you know what was really food you know and you could go down the rabbit hole with you you know so that's that's hilarious i could imagine this some, some wild stuff you know? is broccoli food uh no you have to kill it i think right it depends on the breed of broccoli right yeah, so yeah, you could yeah, just so keep that, it I, so yeah we would go down this rabbit hole we'd be at the nursery and we'd be talking about this it's like well is this really food you know and we'd, we'd have these exact conversations you know and it was funny because i was always on the other side like well you could always try it. it and, you're just you know, trying to figure out how to get him this. to eat a carrot. Just be like, <laughs> yeah, hey, exactly. guess what, bro? I got <laughs> this carrot in the fridge for three weeks. Just I never. I needed the whole other carrot to replant just so you could eat it. And guess That's right. What? That's right. It, I... It's just mind blowing, you know, like how like it can be thought of, you know, in weird ways, you know, and it's kind of interesting to yeah. think about. Plants are cool. It's like the moral of the story, you know. They can do a lot. I love that. Yeah, I never eat my food, uh, food. Food that only shows weakness to your dog. <laughs> totally. I don't want this rabbit food. You know, you're like, get this salad out of here. <laughs> yeah. No, I like. I've been, I've been sneaking greens into my wife's diet slowly for years. <laughs> she's like, when I first met her, she would only eat steak and potato. I'm just like, well, slowly it'll make things happen. First, it was asparagus. It was a long three months. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> uh, we we're at like two hours and 15 minutes. And before yeah. my conversation degrades any further, because it, totally. will, it will degrade. Uh, what do you guys what do you guys say? What do you what do you want to talk about? We got it. I think next in the next little bit, we're going to have hopefully. Are you going to be flowering soon, Corey? I am going to up pot and try to save that one and get some clones. Excellent. Are you good? What about you, Coastal? I am holding out and I am going to defoliate uh, all of them and then I am going to veg them out a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to probably defoliate to 30 to 50% of the lower uh, stock. And then uh, run them under a thousand watt HPS, but uh, I'm just gonna keep pushing them. They're not gonna be able to stay in this tent any longer, so they're going out of here pretty soon, like in the next day or two. But uh, I've been holding out on on taking clones, and then um, Tyler, if you uh, want to reach out to me about clones, I will give you 
um, copies of your your girls because these are, belong to you. And uh, so, just let me know whatever you need. And uh, yeah, heck yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you see something you want, yell. Yeah, man. You know, <laughs> you know, there's 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 a lot of plants. There's a lot of clones, you know, out there. But if there's ever a weird super elite like you'll know you'll know you found superman you know what i mean if you find superman you know you can call me i'm down with that i'll, I'll what is it right that now? for sure i won't be able to get any together by it by and be able to enter it into the unicorn cup but i bet you i could get some flour out by the unicorn cup and get it in front of like everybody that's cool and be there and just be like hey this is the awesome flower i grew of mr trees this ice cream cake is badass. It should be exciting. There's going to be some dope people there. I'm excited to go to a, a cannabis competition here in Canada. It's going to be sick. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, that's cool as hell. I love that. If anybody ever enters a competition, if anybody ever enters a competition and uses my shit and does, any, does, does well with it, you know, places in any category, puts a, puts a, puts a win on the board in any, in any rank or any place, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll hook you up. Man. I'll hook you up with all kinds of you know, free gear and free seeds and free stuff is a thank you, you know, so that's cool. Inner competition. Man. He'll he'll hug you, like, yeah, in real life if good. we run into each other. That, that's how yeah. it goes. It's like, I, <laughs> I've, I've won competitions, but, like, to have my stuff win competitions for somebody else growing it and doing their thing in their own little world, that's, like, a whole, that is, like, that's the, that's the holy grail. You want people to be able to do that, you know what I mean? And, and have that, so do that man people enter competitions man that's cool stuff now that you say that I, I won't be able to enter it for this one but i will enter it if if we find the yeah, right well plans. now you heard me say it so not for the yeah, next one yeah. you keep it's gotta be mind. it's gotta be it's gotta be better than anything else i have i know I'm, i'll be, be honest mr worthy. trees but i'll it's run right. it three times but I'll, I, I'll promise you this i'll run every one of the plants three times this woman and and if, if if and and let you know each time how they do. And yeah, well, before I, mean, I you'll, better you'll take know, cut you know, anything. You'll know. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to run anything three times unless you want to, or you think you did a bad I, job. I like to. I like to try and give it a three times because I fuck up half the time. No, yeah. I'm being sarcastic. No, uh, but so I, there I, is. I, the, I think so. I grew the dog walker right when I was. I took the grow off competition, and I we got this unknown cut, and it was the dog walker and. Nobody knew what the fuck it was, and I grew it like three different ways in three different places to to maximize to see what what my entry was gonna be. Like I'd have three different chances at winning the thing if I split it up, you know. And I grew it the first way that I grew it. I got none of what is great about the plant. I got some weird piece of shit that I never would have, you know, considered any good. You know what I mean? And if it wasn't for the other plants that I had growing. I would have never known what that plant did. You know what I mean? If I would have just killed it after that first time, I would have never known. You know what I mean? That it actually had had something that I still have today. You know what I mean? Like I would never lose that thing. It's like it's unlosable. You know, it's like one of those plants that I would not lose. You know, so yeah, growing it a second time sometimes is wise. You know, but you usually know. There, there's the one in this set here that I've got my eye on. But sorry, go ahead, Corey. I was gonna say, is that the competition that you dried in the hotel room? Yeah, that's the same plant. Yeah, that's, that's a great story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended up drying, no cure, fucking dried it in, a, in in my truck and in a hotel in a hotel room closet in between when my my <laughs> wife and kids were there. So when they were coming back, I'd have to box it all up in Tupperwares and take it to my truck and open it up and put it in my truck and seal up the truck. And then when nobody was there, I would take it back out and put it in the hotel room and open it all up and put it all in the closets and all that stuff and do it. And I did that for the entire drying process of that plant. And I ended up fucking winning third in Terps, fucking the SoCal and the grow up, which was <laughs> off the hook. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's one of my imagine, favorite you know, stories, man. I imagine love that. That's what I lost, you know? Like, By the I, I could have done it so much better, you know? Did, did your wife know, or were you hiding it from her? No, this, she knew. I mean, my wife's cool. It's just I had little kids, and I was being respectful of everybody, and I was just trying to, you know, not – I'm just – I'm that I'm that type of guy, so. Um, the people yeah, at the airport knew. Everybody knew. My, <laughs> mom, my mom was coming to the hotel to help us because she was helping helping us, you know, because my house got was getting work done and stuff, and she knew. 
as she came and she's like, I could smell that all the way in the lobby. In the lobby was like across, <laughs> like so far away. You know what I mean? It was like all the way across. She's like, you got to do something. And I'm like, I know. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's too late. I, there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. I gotta oh, well, if, you got, if you got a plant like that, you let me know. You know what I mean? That's what we're talking about. You know? That's a good one. Yeah, That's mine. Good one. Mine was helping me get, like, uh, plants into a fucking U-Haul container. I was like, I never thought I'd marry someone who literally helped me, like, move plants into a U-Haul container to hide them while we're, like, showing a house for sale. And so I'm, like, in the middle of a grow, and I'm, like, taking, like, all these damn plants and shoving them into a rental unit. And then I'm, like, like praying to God, and it doesn't open up or no one. Like, fi- like, yeah, it, it was just hilarious. But it's 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 funny to just have a a woman that uh, is, is down with everything, and 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 just looks at everything and goes, "Oh, okay, let's do this." Yeah, let's go ahead with this because it, it, that's not always common. They tell you you're an idiot. You shouldn't do it. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. That too. <laughs> It helps you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> my wife always says, you're an idiot. You shouldn't do that. All right, I'm going to go like, water these puppies. I'm an idiot. That's why I'm going to do it. my kids good night. All right, I appreciate it, guys. You have a wonderful night yourself. We'll end yeah, the broadcast here. I'll appreciate see you guys it. in a couple weeks. Good night.